Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another video. Today we are reaching 8,000 days in Hardcore Minecraft. In these past 1,000 days, we've mainly been down in the ancient city. We just got done restoring the entire thing. This entire portal over here is now made out of quartz. Thank you all so much for watching. This place is absolutely crazy now. It's looking clean. We have a nightclub all the way over here that we had built. This disco is going crazy. We have Disco Cat in the middle. Everything is just so lively in here. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. We'll be recapping the last six episodes. The journey starts with this giant nether hub that we had made. Every single episode in this video took way longer than it should have. But now for our 1000 day tradition, I feel like we should go to the bottom of the world and fight the wither. Load all the way down to bedrock. Walk on over here and say what up to Dwayne. What's going on, Dwayne? We walk all the way down this hallway. We actually have three skulls set up right here. Let's take these. Should probably replace the elytra with a chest plate for now. It's better to be safe and sorry, and we have so many chickens. I'll show you. We have probably a thousand chickens down here. Well, here goes nothing. We got bang, bang, and boom. Loading up the bow here and ready to go. Wow, how'd that blast hit me from back here somehow? He is just barreling his way through this cave, and he's at like half health now, almost there at least. And okay, time for the sword. Let's go, dude. You're done. You're done. You done, 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 sir. Well, that wither is really withering me down pretty good. Let's run in here, torch this place up just a little bit. Ooh, we got zombies in here. You really just have to keep eating because this wither too just doesn't stop. We have the beloved Nether Star. Now we can make a beacon like we've always wanted. And we'll slap it back on the Tower of Emeralds here for the one that we had replaced and sent to the ancient city. Also, since we reached 8,000, we're going to have to uh, do our tradition, which is getting another advancement. I'm gonna have this guy right here get in the boat. Thank you, sir. I'll trap myself in while we're here, and I'm gonna trade with you real quick to lock in your job. Three, two, one. See you later, dude. I'm coming with you. Believe we're approaching the top, and there we are, sir. Hey, what's up? We got puppy up here, and this guy I'm gonna trade with you just for a quick advancement. Nice. Star Trader, let's go. Before we start the 8,000 day recap, I did just want to say thanks again for all the support. Appreciate all the YouTube members, Twitch subscribers, and Patreon members as well. Without further ado, let's get into it. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. We are starting out in our brand new Skeleton XP farm where a lot of these guys are waiting to get uh, swiped away. Swiper, yes, swiping, and uh, actually if you look over here we have plenty of bones which means a bunch more bone meal. The only thing you gotta do is kinda just get rid of a lot of these bows, you don't really need a lot of these. These enchanted bows you can actually take over to a grindstone and get XP from them so they're not entirely useless. Take a little bit from there, thank you sir. But I am really enjoying making these XP farms somewhere that's actually nice and comfortable to hang out. Get you out of here, buddy. That's the last one. Let's actually go back upstairs. Guys, today we are going to be going to the deep dark biome. One of the last biomes that we've been to. I think it's about time we actually go to an ancient city. We got to get skulk blocks. We got to start decorating the world with those. Also, the skulk sensor would be really nice to get to. For this trip, I've packed up a bunch of totems of undying and a bunch of wool. I believe you also need a silk touch hoe. We only have a fortune three hoe, so let's actually combine some books here, get rid of some levels, and make ourselves the ultimate hoe. And voila, the silk touch hoe has begun its journey. Supposedly this is the best tool to be able to get the skulk blocks with. What's going on, Santa? Now we were lucky enough to actually find the ancient city while we were building the new rainbow mountain on the other side over here. We barely have one layer done, but uh, actually this thing is enormous, about twice the size of the original rainbow mountain, so when we were all the way over in the mesa biome, we ended up finding the palace that is the ancient city. All we have to do is avoid the warden and hopefully we can take away some rare loot. I know that there's actually some armor trim here that we can't get anywhere else in the game. Coming up on about 1,500 blocks away from spawn, so it's a little bit of a ways out. We are still on the inside of Rainbow Mountain, and we found this thing when we were caving one day on stream. Perched up here, and uh, we actually walked in. That's why all of the torches are already pre-placed. Those of you that have been hanging out on the Twitch streams, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It is twitch.tv slash waxfraud if you want to check that out, and there's the skulk. We also have a lot of mobs, so we need to probably light this place up. Let's hop across real quick. We gotta light this area up. We do not want any zombies falling on us once we go all the way down there. Let's get this area lit right here as well. I think outside it might be nighttime because down here in the cave there's actually not a lot of mob spawning, which is actually great for me right now. This whole area seems to be lit up, but uh, if I glide down on water, I think the skulk sensors can hear me or at least sense me flying down here. So I need to be extra careful. And is that a chest? I see a chest already. 
Hop over here real quick and light this corner up. Wow, this place is enormous. When we jump down, we just need to make sure we stay crouching or at least fly around with some wool. Let's uh, maybe light up this area here too. Ooh, what is going, oh, actually that is the best. Oh, okay, that's the last biome. I completely forgot that this is the last biome to get and there's another advancement right there, sneak 100. It is so eerie down here. You can see all the sensors down there. Definitely can't be tripping those off. Okay, someone grab their friend. I don't want to be dealing with these guys anymore. So there's a chest right there on the other side of this lava, and it looks like there's a sensor right next to it. Let's, uh, let's keep crouching down over here. I'm gonna take some of the materials here. I cannot wait to start building with some of this. The skulk blocks themselves and the skulk veins are just gonna make great decorations. Take some of this out here. I think I need to be- okay, gotta be careful. I think I just- okay, yep, there's some sensors right down here. What we really need to look out for are those shriekers, though. I'm gonna see if I can crawl down here and start collecting some of these sensors so they can just get out and get be gone. Oh no, that's not good. I did not see those. I also did not see these. Can we hop down real quick? Let's grab that, that, that. Oh man, this is crazy. There's caves everywhere. Honestly, this right here looks awesome. Complete skulk block cave. We really need to be on the lookout for shriekers, though. I'm glad I haven't tripped any of those off yet. Let's see if we can land right over here, safe and sound. Ooh, okay, we gotta be careful. Okay, we got our first chest. What do we got here? Ooh, amethyst shards, echo shards. Lure three book, not too bad. Might as well just break every chest we see. Hope the warden doesn't mind. I'm crawling around his home. I'm gonna go here. Maybe need to place some more torches around some of this wool. Okay, what do we have ourselves here? Let's grab- Oh man, let's be careful. We have ourselves a skulk catalyst. Oh, we can make a skulk farm now. Let's go. Wow, I am surprised. I just placed a torch right there, and there is a shrieker right here. I don't know how I didn't set that off, but let's go ahead and just take this guy out with the silk touch hoe, and we should be good. So we got pretty lucky. Four strikes with these guys, and the warden comes right out. I see a chest all the way up there. I want to go grab that, but let's go ahead and grab this catalyst here first real fast. I'm not seeing any more shriekers around here right now, but we will hear it if we, uh, if we come across it. I'm kind of glad that you get four strikes because it allows you to explore this place a little bit more safely. I'm just sprinting all day in here now. I don't... Oh god, I need to be careful. As soon as I start sprinting, I fall through a hole. Okay, we need to be careful. There's like eight of the sensors right here. Let's take this catalyst and... I don't think there's a shrieker around here, otherwise we would have heard it already. Let's take you out. Thank you, sir. Honestly, let's just start going crazy. I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you, you, thank you. Give me that. Man, the warden must just be in hibernation mode because uh, he is not hearing a thing. I love that mobs don't typically spawn down here either, because that would just make it ten times more difficult. Ooh, okay, we have a Shrieker. I'm glad that we were taking it easy around that corner. Let's grab you, thank you. Got a lot of candles here. This must be like a big sh- Oh, actually, this is some sort of shrine. This is like a big portal. I'm gonna take all these candles, though. Thank you. Lot of soul campfires right here. I wonder what this portal's supposed to lead to. And these are the reinforced deep slate bricks that we're supposedly not able to grab in survival mode. Whoa, guys, watch this. If I break the candle, okay. Uh, oh, wait, that means there's skulk in there. Thank you, buddy. I'll take you. Let me see here and test this out. Can we grab this? Um, is it just going to take an infinite amount of time? I'm not sure. This, oh, actually, I do see it breaking, but it's so slow. Like, this has to be like 10 times slower than obsidian. And I have efficiency 5 on this pickaxe. Well, you know what? Instead of breaking this and possibly breaking the portal for a future update, let's uh, let's go ahead and go over here, and I'll just keep grabbing these. I feel like we cleared out most of the skulk in the area, except for these little guys in here above these redstone lamps. Let's fly through the portal. That was pretty fun. Let's see if we can land up here on this chest. I really hope we can get ourselves some good loot. Okay, I just heard a shrieker. That's not good. Okay, that was strike one. We need to be careful, man. We really need to be careful. Dude, there's a shrieker right below us. This is not good. I want to be able to get down there, but uh, I got to place the wool. I got to go slow. I see more loot, and I also see more shriekers, so uh, we got to take it easy since we got a strike already. All right, what do you got for me here, buddy? We got, oh, swift sneak three, two of the, yes, yeah, swift sneak. We also have C4, 18, 13, and Cat. Let's go, dude. It's crazy that flying with Elytra sets these things off, man. It's nuts. Uh, let's take all three of these out. The noise that these sensors make when you take them away is awful. Oh my god, I did not even see this thing here. We definitely need to be careful. 
Creeping over with a little bit of wool, taking you out, Buster. Whoa, the skulk over the gold ore looks amazing. Looks like there's a mini pillager outpost in here. That's pretty cool over there, but uh, let's keep creeping over this way just a little bit further. Take you out. I cannot wait till all of these sensors are gone. We'll be finally able to, uh, you know, probably revamp this place. Maybe bring some moss down here, make it a nice little garden area. Turning this ancient city into a green, lush paradise is definitely going to go on the goal board. Sir, you're going to have to get into my inventory. Okay, I have stumbled upon a lot of loot. I really hope there's no shriekers around. Let's get the catalyst. Let's get the sensors. I think we're good now. God, every, every block down here makes a crazy noise when you mine it. Oh, is that... Do I see a skeleton head? Let's go! No way, dude! I've been trying to get this with a charged creeper, and I always get the zombie heads. Now we have a skeleton head. Yes! Dude, the skeleton head just made this whole thing worth it. Let's see what we got over here in the loot chest. Bottle of enchanting, not bad. Swift sneak again. What is this? Disc fragment? So we collect disc fragments, and enough of them make a music disc. Let's go, dude. Okay, I'll take it. And in the other chest, let's see. Okay, wow, that's not bad. Early game, that would have been super nice. Bunch of bone meal, more disc fragments. Let's go, dude. All of these hallways are so eerie. I'm just, I'm super glad there's no extra mobs down here. Oh my god, how am I supposed to get both of these? Oh my god, there's four shriekers. Okay, whoa. Let's, you know what? Let's just, uh, let's take it easy. Let's, we have enough shriekers. We have enough sensors in this area. Let's just, let's get away from there, and uh, we'll come back another time. Oh, jeez, I think I pushed my luck a little bit. We gotta be careful, dude. We really gotta be careful. Dude, when there's two of these right next to each other, it just, it makes me want to just get away from that spot right there. I do believe I'm on three strikes, though, because I got two and one on the first one, and that was number three. So if I can just go straight up here again, I can fly right out. We're just gonna keep on building up with the wolf for just a little bit, make a more safe escape. Down here is actually where we came in from. Let's see if we can land up. I believe we got all the sensors out of this area, so we don't even have to really be that careful up here anymore. But it's uh, better to be safe than sorry. Let yeah, we found the... Let's go, dude. That's a, that's a successful trip. Let's take a sleep in the river near a little bit of Rainbow Mountain. Okay, I just want to see what loot we came away with, because we just spent about a half hour down there, and, uh, man, that was a thrill. Definitely going back down for more. We got a, quite a bit of stuff. Lots of candles. Got the Skulk Catalyst here. We have a bunch of Skulk Sensors. These will be fun for Redstone. And I am so happy about these Skeleton Skulls. I can't... I have been trying to get these with the Charge Creepers for so long, but the zombies, they just keep taking it away. I have a bunch of zombie heads, but no skeleton heads. I didn't even know that Skeleton Skulls were down there. And these Shriekers look super cool. I can't wait to incorporate these within some builds. The only thing we didn't get was the armor trim. We got the Swift Sneak 3. Let's go back and apply that to our pants real fast. This is a very long flight. It always takes like two minutes to get back over there, which means we're probably going to have to set up the Nether Highway over to that. Getting a Nether Portal hooked up at the Ancient City is going to save us a lot of time. Speaking of the Nether, that is where we're going to be doing our build today. And uh, you guys could probably tell from the title of the episode, the Nether Hub. That is what we're going to be building. I know we just spent a lot of time in a dangerous zone, but uh, I think we can go make another dangerous zone just a little bit more safe. Our current nether hub location needs to get a little bit more safe, and these netherite leggings need to get a little bit more swifty. So let's uh, let's go ahead and upgrade them. Nice. Throw these bad boys on. Look at that. I'm going to hang my skeleton skull right on the bookshelf so we can see it right when we walk in the second floor. Let's go upstairs here real fast. For the majority of this nether hub build, I'm going to use a lot of stone because that is what we've been using for the nether highway. And this nether highway is going to connect to this nether hub, so might as well continue with the stone. We're going to be hooking up some other blocks like some glowstone and probably some deep slate here and there. Man, I really wish that we could get that reinforced deep slate. That would be awesome. Let's speed race it on over to our nether portal over here. Let's see if we can throw our fancy pants on. We don't have Swift Sneak on these gold pants, but, uh, you know, we did get three of those Swift Sneak books, so we can apply those to these, too. Let's hop down to the Strider Sanctuary. I think this nether hub is actually going to be built right on top. So a lot of the Strider Sanctuary was made out of blackstone, but it's pretty soon it's going to be covered up completely by stone. Let's fly over here. I have been taking out a lot of these blocks. I think there's a villager back here still, actually. No villager, but there is a hoglin right there. And is this guy stuck? Because he doesn't even see me at all. Yeah, he has to be stuck. Sorry about this, buddy. Oh my god, and there's the village. I was about to waste the arrow that I had on me. I looked right at him. What's up, dude? And we've been taking out plenty of blocks around here because I think this might take the shape of something that's like a castle. Take out more blocks here. We have to be careful of hoglins. They're just going to fall right on us. I think this might go about 50 by 50 blocks, so we have to continually keep on taking out this netherrack. I think first things first, well, okay, and I just fell through the hole that I created. I'm going on back up here. I think uh, first things first, let's make a giant circle made out of this stone. 
I'm thinking we should probably make this thing uh, massive because it's long overdue. Sir, you're gonna have to leave. You up there, you're gonna have to leave too. Thank you and uh, get gone and please get gone. Well, we've built ourselves up a circle, but as you can see, the netherrack is pretty much just right on top of this thing. And also we have hoglins that are spawning everywhere here. Sorry, sir, but you're gonna have to be yeeted. You too, little man. It's time to get you yeeted. Big on, sir. We've been systematically taking out all the rows of netherrack and the gold and the quartz up here to get all this out of the way. I just want enough room to be able to tower up. Get more of this exposed out this way. And we'll start opening up the bottom here. Man, this thing is huge. I am glad we finally got this nether hub going. I'm thinking I want this thing to just be a little bit taller, so we'll probably go up about one, maybe two more rows. Drink a fire res potion. We're down on the side. I think it'd be cool to actually come down and make some pillars going up. I think I might interchange these, though, with some basalt. Ooh, yeah, the basalt is actually a nice contrast from this stone right here. Let's keep doing that. So I'm trying to make a small peninsula with this basalt, and I can't really figure out how far out I want it to go. I don't think it's out far enough yet, and I'm gonna have to battle this guy since uh, we're, we're here together. Uh, buddy, sorry about this. Well, that was crazy close. I- oh my god, dude, I'm glad we flew out of there just in time. Gotta make sure we keep these carrots on deck. Let's, uh, let's use the bow, our old friend. Thank you very much, and, uh, goodbye, sir. That was not very smart. I don't have fire res, and, uh, yeah, that was just not- that was just not smart at all. I am thinking we should extend this, though. It's going out three, 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 two, two, two to one. I think we should honestly go out four, so go up here. Bring this guy out to a third, and also come out here to bring this guy out to a third. Just gonna extend all of these by one. Let's delete these inside guys out of existence, and then we can start towering ourselves up. Going up about yay high, and this actually means we'll probably raise this initial tower up by probably about 10 blocks. But for now, let's fly right back down here. I think I'm gonna switch these out with regular basalt and the polished basalt. It doesn't look too different, but it does look slightly different. It has a little bit more what looks like gray concrete inside of there. But we'll go on and off with regular and polished basalt. Man, I just love building in the nether, it's so fun. And why I don't have a fire res potion on right now is beyond me, I, I really need to be smarter. We have been popping way too many totems in this world, so it's about time we stop doing that. It's so fun finally getting some stuff built in the nether, it's taken me long enough. And here's a thought, it would be cool if some sort of chiseled polished basalt was available in this game where all four sides looked just like this. Pretty glad right about now that the nether highway has provided us with so much basalt. Sir, I, I don't think you should be here right now. You're, I think you might be in the wrong spot. The lava down there that's moving is kind of bugging me just a little bit, so I'm going to grab a couple of buckets, fly right back down there. Let's do just a little bit of repairing. We have a lot of movement, and we could be fixing this. This small part that's sticking out, I originally only had going until about right here, and that's why we need to keep on replacing this lava. Shouldn't take too much time to make this stuff look smooth again. Break some of this glass here real quick so that we can start building this up a little bit more. You better not be messing with my stuff there, pal. I, uh, you know what happens. You need not be here anymore. Be gone. Those hoglins, man. Those are going to be the reason I pop a totem. It's not going to be a warden. It's not going to be an enderman. It's going to be taken on a battle with a hoglin. Those guys pack a punch, and for some reason, I always forget how strong they are. Should be finishing this up here pretty soon, and not bad. Let's see if I can make it over to some land, and let's float on over. This is actually where we got our first strider. You know, that doesn't look too bad. Let's get a close-up look from higher up. Somehow I ended up all the way on the ceiling. Uh, let's actually glide back down. Here we go. Perfect. Not bad at all, dude. I love this. All we have to do is get this done on four sides, and now it's got me thinking, this auto-sorting system nether portal, I'm probably gonna end up taking this thing away. We would be starting the basalt extension right about here, but this glass pathway is in the way, and I don't even really need the auto-sorting system to be in this location. But you better be behaving, sir. And, uh, yeah, so this auto-sorting system right here, it's probably gonna get moved about 300 to 400 blocks that way, because right now we are pretty much right under our town. The Donkey Sanctuary, I'll show you guys right now. If we go up from this beacon hole, the Donkey Sanctuary is actually right here. So our town is just, it's expanded over time right on top of the auto-sorting system. 
It rests right about here, and it's going to start creating some FPS issues if we expand it, so we're going to have to move it to under Rainbow Mountain. Break the glass on the surrounding sides, and you know what? Let's just break the portal right now, and oh my god, I forgot how loud that is. You know what, buddy? I'm not... Let's just, uh, let's push you over here. I think you belong... Okay, no, never mind. Let's start cleaning up all this glass. We'll clean up all these frog lights. We'll have to get the actual highway out, too, which means getting the ice put back in its storage. Let's break this. That's not too bad, and this actually just goes right here. There's hopefully no hoglins, just that guy. Built up enough walls so the hoglins can't reach. It should just go four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Sir, please stop looking at me. You're gonna have to get out of here. Get the corner up here. Okay, not too bad. Let's actually get this closed up, and let's take a look. Um, we're actually probably, now that I'm thinking about it, the other side. If we actually start building this over here, we're prob- ouch. We're probably gonna- yep, exactly. We're gonna have to start taking this stuff away right here, so, uh, well, let's start doing it. There's always more landscaping to be done. Nice, this little entrance is looking cool out of the polished basalt and the regular basalt. If we actually take a little bit of a flight up here, you can see how much land we've finally taken out. I still gotta take some of this back layer out too to give myself a little bit of a better view from up here, but uh, for the most part, we've gotten like 70% of this big old chunk taken out. This huge void you see behind me used to be all netherrack, so I'm pretty glad that we finally got all this taken away. I'm going to take a little bit more out up here, and I think on the other side of this little peninsula, we have a lot of crimson forest that still needs to get taken out. I'm really enjoying the shape of this right now. I'm going to get a little bit more of this out of the way. Kind of looks like Kirby jumping up in the air. I brought a few more materials with me, like some deep slate and some verdant frog lights that I can go ahead and put on the side here. I thought it might be cool to have a ring of the frog lights covered with the deep slate going around the side. I was trying to get it to go halfway down, but I think lining it up with these stone blocks of the nether highway is probably going to work out just fine. I need to keep on drinking fire res potions, man. I don't know why, but I have been slacking on those. These frog lights are so bright. I'm glad we're covering these guys up. Let's go over here with a couple more, and let's take a quick flight away. I just want to see what this looks like. Fly over here to the nearly completely decimated land, and oh, that's going to be solid. I like that a lot. Let's jump down and continue this guy right here. This is going to be my favorite addition to this so far. I can't wait to start detailing this. I think we are actually out of frog lights. Yes, we are. Okay, so unfortunately, yeah, we're out of frog lights, but uh, we do have a frog light sanctuary right over here. I guess it's more of a farm, but uh, let's actually just pop in right from above, and we're going to have to make some green frog lights. Picked one up already. Let's go. And we have our first victim. Hello, sir. Get in the battle arena. Get in there right now. Thank you, be gone, thank you. You too, sir. Come on over here. Oogity boogity, follow me. And into the arena you go. All right, and boom, and boom, and you guys are about to be some frog lights. Hey, you, sir. Not in the battle arena? Get in there. What are you doing not in there? You would be a frog light now. You too, guys. I don't know what you're thinking hanging out over here, but get over in there. You gotta be a frog light. Okay, so we have a stack of each at least. I'm gonna keep smacking a couple of these guys around, though. I wanna go under to the minecart system to see what we've collected. Let's actually hop down there real quick and dodge all these guys. What's down here? Uh, actually, I hope there's no pigmen down here. Anybody down? Anybody home? I don't see anybody. Okay, let's, uh, oh my god, we are loaded. We definitely have a lot of frog lights now. We are not running out anytime soon. Let's, uh, let's get a couple more while we're here, because why not? Get on in there, sir. Become a frog light. Okay, we can finally get this side finished up over here. Let's go frog light. Deep slate on top. One, two, three. And let's get that finished. Not bad. Let's fly out and see what this looks like. It's looking good from down here, that's for sure. But uh, I think we need to light up the top because we got, we got hoglins spawning everywhere. Sir, you gotta get out of here. Please be yeeted. And uh, actually, I'm thinking uh, we're probably going to add some more pearlescent frog lights down the center aisles here. I had these four diagonal rows going out, but I think if we have four more going down the centers, that would be cool. Land here, sir. I don't want to deal with you. You're going to have to be gone. Please get just get out of here. See ya. But for these basalt extensions, I think on these first levels, let's light them up. But first, let's uh, let's get some deep slate on the sides. Then next, I feel like we should get some blue ice in just uh, to keep it consistent. And for our light source and for part decoration, let's get some ochre frog lights in here. Continue this pattern here. And that's not looking too bad. Especially when you get all four of them lit up. This is great. 
The only problem is this ceiling is much too close. I think I want this thing to go a little bit taller, and if I go up here to take a look at it, I can barely still take a look at it, so I think I might have to take a lot of this netherrack out right here. Which calls for a couple more Twitch streams of excavation. Netherrack, you must be gone. Get out of here. Well, we are back from a Twitch stream, and unfortunately, I got some bad news. We accidentally broke a pickaxe. Uh, we broke our Fortune 3 pickaxe instead of our Silk Touch. We can make another one because we do have a Netherite upgrade, luckily. We do have to take a break from this, and unfortunately, we do have to get rid of some levels. But uh, I was actually going to have to get rid of some levels anyways when I was going to fix this bow, because it's down to about 42 durability. On the west side, we have a chicken, I guess, but uh, we have our barrels here, and I've been stacking a lot of the netherrack and uh, a lot of the excess materials that we've been gathering. Get that where it belongs, and uh, I'll see you later, chicken. I gotta go spend some levels. Let's craft a bow real quick. Putting these together is too expensive. Hold up. Okay, 17, not too bad. I think it's worth it having a brand new bow. Let's grab ourselves a mending book. I think in our ender chest, we have a bunch of enchanted books over here. Grab an Efficiency 5 book. Unbreaking 3 will do. I found two Fortune 2 books for some reason. I'm just going to use 6 points to uh, make those Fortune 3. And now we have Unbreaking 3, Mending, Efficiency 5, and Fortune 3, which can get us our ultimate book. We'll de-enchant this guy. Grab that XP. Let's go downstairs to grab our Netherite template. Should have stored it right here. There we go. It's kind of crazy that we have to take this extra step now, but we'll put that there, put the template in, we'll get that in, and we have ourselves a netherite pickaxe. Go to our downstairs anvil and put these two together. We have 23 points. Wait, what'll this do? Oh, it won't even do it. 23 points it is. Wow, I haven't been down to 39 levels in months. And Santa, get back on that. Thank you very much. Stay on that cake. Our Silk Touch pickaxe is named Selkie, so I feel like it's only right that we name our Fortune 3 pickaxe Toonie. Let's, let's head back to the Nether and get some of these levels back. Hop in a boat down to the Blaze Farm. I could do a bunch of trading, but the Blaze Farm is right here, so why not? And it seems like some of them are already waiting for me. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. It's a little loud down here, but we can at least get ourselves some levels back. Let's, uh, let's keep swiping. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you, and thank you. It's like they all got the invitation to the Blaze Rod party. Thank you guys very much. I do appreciate your help. I'll take all the XP I can right now. And honestly, that's probably enough right there. We got over 50 or like halfway to back to where we were. That's, that's probably okay. Well, we definitely have enough Blaze Rods to last for a while now. Now let's get back to building this thing. We have, oh god, I almost just flew, flew right through the end. I actually did. Endermen, of course, are trying to grief the Strider Sanctuary. Let's uh, take that out. Uh, the interior here, it's a little bit... Uh, we got some work to do. But the exterior here, this uh, this is starting to come together. This guy over here took my frog light. Buddy, I, uh, I'm not dealing with that right now. Back at the frog light farm real quick. Let's go ahead and make ourselves some magma cubes. A couple stacks should do. I want to actually put these next to those frog lights. We're going to alternate magma block and frog light on this roof here. For some of these internal layers, I think we're going to have to put some glass layers down here because I don't want any gas to be able to spawn inside of this nether hub. Nice. This looks like a flaming sword. Let's keep this going. Get some black stone up in here. And some pink terracotta in between. Gotta get more frog lights. The pink terracotta in the crimson forest almost has a red tint. It's kind of nice. Top it off with the magma cube. Then just a nice little layer of glass so this doesn't become a hoglin spawner. I still want to be able to see everything up here too. Let's close this up here. That should be it. Let's take a little bit of a flight out. Turn around and... Wow. Oh my god. This is a mosaic. This is looking kind of crazy. The only thing is this overhang of netherrack right here. It's kind of blocking the view. We land on the tree up here. We can see... Yeah, we've taken out a lot of netherrack, but there's still so much netherrack to be taken. And there's hoglin spawning up here. There's... Oh my gosh. There's... Everything is spawning up here. Now we should probably... We'll just... We'll come back later. I have a brand new bow, sir. Please leave me alone. Well, this will be spawn-proof as soon as these guys stop falling from there. Just gotta keep coming back every now and then and keep taking it all out. I think I've spent more time excavating netherrack than I have actually building the nether hub. See ya, buddy. Sorry about that. Buddy, I have a joke for you. It's pretty funny. Would you like to hear it? And uh, I'll see you, see you later. Hey, dude, I have a joke for you. It's pretty funny. Would you like to hear it? I'll see you later. Hey, you over there. Would you like to hear a joke? Well, there are hoglins still spawning down here, so what we should probably do is start adding some glass to these little extensions. 
Honestly, the glass makes this all look a lot nicer, too. And now all I can think about is basalt slabs. Why can't we have basalt slabs? We also got a nice little layer of glass down here for the nether highway, but uh, we do need to remove some of this netherrack right here and also remove the stone, because that's still spawnable. But before we get that done, I want to use the stone as a bridge to go over here and lay some lava down. This whole little hallway here is about to be covered up, and it's about to look great from the other side. Get one, two, and three, and then let's actually go under here. And, uh, nice, this is perfect. This is great, because now when we enter back in from a nice trip in the nether, we can come through the lava. Oh, perfect. And down here, we can finally take a look at the Strider Sanctuary under the white stained glass. I actually don't use stained glass very often, but I probably should, because stained glass is awesome. Now we can plug this up, start taking the bridge out. Also, this netherrack's gotta go. Just now thinking about the random end of the frog light here, and I want to cover it up with a little bit of a trap door. Not sure why, but that makes me a lot happier. And I'm probably not going to do that to any other frog lights except for this one on the very end. We have so much netherrack to still take out over here. This is, it's just endless. I stared at this guy a while ago, and he's not really doing anything about it at all. He's kind of just, he's kind of just vibing down there. Honestly, I, I think he needs some help. Oh, he found his way up here. He found his way up. Get away. Get. Well, this guy, uh, he disappeared because he probably realized he doesn't want any smoke. These guys are still spawning on the end up here. We probably should get some slabbage. We're going to start off with a grindstone directly in the middle, and then we're going to slab it up on every other stone block here. In between all the slabs, let's use some pressure plates that are never going to burn. And then down on the bottom extension here, since there's no slabbage for the basalt variants, let's go ahead and put some stone buttons down. This is reminding me I cannot wait for the new update that's going to come next year. The new tough variant blocks are going to be so amazing. Ooh, and the slabbage gives it that little castle effect. Looking at the side now, it does feel a little empty. I think we should probably hang some end rods and maybe have some end rod spikes going up from this middle frog light section. We should definitely pay attention to see if hoglins are around. Let's get this guy out of existence here and then we can get back down there safely. As I was saying, we're going to use some dirt scaffolding here to get these uh, hanging end rods going. I'm going to start out with some deep slate wall warped fence to chain to end rod action, and that is not looking too bad. Let's get this on every corner under the extension here. Realistically, under here, we could probably use any wood type, but I'm just going to keep it consistent and use some nether wood. Sorry, buddy. It's... Yeah, my bad. We got the end rods all the way down there. I think we can take away some of this dirt. Let's actually hop back up safely. It's all at the same level except for right in the middle where it comes down to a point. Let's see here. All right, not bad at all. That actually adds a lot of life to the walls. Let's do the same thing by adding some spikes. We'll go right to the middle right here and we'll add you, you, and you. I'm hoping this looks decent and oh, okay. Actually, that's really nice. I'm, I'm, I'm liking that a lot more than I thought I would. Let's, let's add this to every side. These guys are always trying to fight. Get over here, buddy. Come on. Yep, always trying to fight. Trying to start stuff that they can't finish. I, uh, as you can see, finished this side. We can go up here, and we completed this side as well. This thing is looking fantastic. I've, I've never made another hub before, and I'm pretty proud of this. Right now, I actually have left a hole in the roof in case I just want to fly out from the middle. Something I'd like to do to the top is place some crimson fungus over here, and then get the warped fungus over here. We usually decorate with all the other flowers, but, you know, it's only right we use the fungus from the nether. One more time around the forest. Let's see if we can glide through. There we go. Yeah, this thing is nice. Okay, I think the exterior might be complete. Let's see. You know what? Let's just let's throw an ender pearl down here real quick. And uh, I kind of want to do the interior now. I am going to leave one strip of glass here so that the boats don't stray away when we're traveling with them. But on the outside, just so that nothing spawns here, let's line this up with some amethyst. I think for the most part, we're going to get the interior decorated on stream, but I do want to get at least a little bit of the center done right now. So just so we don't use all of our amethyst clusters and so that it's not just kind of overpacked with them, I think we're just going to go every other with the amethyst clusters. We're going to get some torch flowers in here too. And then I was thinking behind every frog light, let's go ahead and put some skulk sensors in. This is going to add a lot of color. I'm wondering about shriekers as decoration. If we put this here, yeah, that's going to be a little loud. Let's just, let's take this out. We'll just keep that here. And then, you know, the sensors, these, uh, these are good for now. And this nether portal in the middle, I feel like, you know what, let's just go up here real quick. Let's raise this thing all the way to the top. Well, here comes four broken portal sounds. Oh, that's going to be loud. Here comes three more. Get the obsidian connected up top. We'll get the glowstone connected too. 
This hole in the center right now, I feel like, just has to be plugged up by the glowstone. I'll put a layer of glass here, too. We can drop in like this, and then we can fly in like... That's not bad. Let's light all four of these up, and then that'll be able to take us right back home. Let's see if this is linked up correctly. And we are back. This is perfection. Let's fly out into the giant void that we created. Look at this. This thing is enormous. Turn the render distance up here. Nice, dude. This, oh my gosh, it's magnificent. Guys, I, I can't believe we did it. We are going to continuously take more of this netherrack out, and we're going to get the interior of this nether hub done very soon. Hi, everybody. Wax Brought here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Minecraft Let's Play series. We are back in the nether for just a little bit of time. I'm kind of clearing up some netherrack behind the brand new nether hub. This guy told me he wanted to hear a joke, so I'm going to tell him, Oh my god, I'm sorry, dude. Oh, jeez. That, that was not a good joke. Well, let's, uh, let's get away from that for a second, and uh, we can do- Oh my god, look at this hoglin all the way up here. But the nether hub, this thing is enormous, and I'm glad that we finally got one done. This thing took us all week to complete on stream, and I'm so happy to finally have a safe place to call home in the nether. Let's fly back and see if this guy forgave me. Did you forgive me, buddy? Are you- I have been forgiven, it looks like. Okay, so, uh, do you want to hear that joke? I bet you do, and see you later. We still have a lot of work to do cleaning up the backside over here. I'll get some of these trees that are just hanging out of nowhere. This all used to just be netherrack, and man, we've done a lot of work. Hey, buddy, I heard you also like jokes. Uh, well, there's a joke for you. Hey, any of you guys want to hear a joke? Hey, sir, this is this right here is pretty funny. See ya. Let's fly around. Ouch. Uh, let's fly all the way back here. This thing is magnificent, dude. Oh my god, it's huge. And when we fly up close, we can go right down into the middle. There's one by one hole right here that we can fly through, and we are now in the nether. Safe and sound like we never have been before, and the striders are looking pretty safe down here too. And I'm thinking while we're in here, let's get at least something done. I would like to get these walls a little bit less bare. Let's put some glowberries on them, but uh, I think I have some netherrack that I want to build off of all the way over here. This is basically all the materials that we got while we were excavating all the netherrack from above the farm. Looks like we have plenty of netherrack back here. Let's use some of this. Let's get the glowberries going all the way around. This is about to look lush. Let's spam some bone meal. We're probably gonna have to make some more. Ooh, I'm loving the green already. This is looking great. And oh, okay, oops, that was an accident. Let's fly back up here real fast. Let's see if we can finish this. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. Should probably take the netherrack out because we got some stuff spawning here already. Hey, uh, here's a joke for you. Not looking too bad, though. This is starting to look a lot more lush, but uh, I have a feeling that if any of these get a little bit too close to this lava, then they're going to burn, catch fire, and actually spread to all the other ones. So we might need to stop it about right here. But, you know, let's just see if that happens first. If it burns down, then uh, we'll replace it, and we'll put some trap doors down, and if it doesn't burn down, then we are good to go. It's kind of messing with me a little bit, looking upwards and taking out all this netherrack. While this grows, I actually do want to show you guys the brand new hallway that we have going to the ancient city. Just now realizing that I did not put any glass on that section right there. But then we take a right, and eventually we're going to go zoom all the way past, and here we are. And we now have a portal set up at the ancient city. If we look down here, that is exactly where we first landed. And while we're here, I'm going to add a little bit of green elements, because uh, I think what I'm going to do is make a giant grand staircase that goes all the way down to the ancient city. That'll most likely be done over a long play, but it is going to be nice to have an official way of getting down here, because, I mean, right now I'm just kind of falling down and then flying back up, when really we could just have a staircase that enters right about here. This place is crazy. I think there's a couple corners that I didn't explore, and there is a catalyst right here that I missed as well. This may not be the best idea, but let's try going after another loot chest here. You get out of here, and you get out of here. I'll take this catalyst. Let's see if we can come up over here without making any noise, because I see a chest right about here. Is there any shriekers right below? Last time there was, let's see, I don't, oh, there is a shrieker down there. None that I can see, though. Give me some good loot. You know, another swift sneak three, I'll take it. Ooh, another chest down here. Let's fly slowly down. I don't think there's any sensors at over here at all. Some book. Ooh, an enchanted golden apple. Let's go. Wait, actually, that's two enchanted golden apples. Let's go, dude. If the warden comes out, I'll be eating one of these right away. Looks like there's a little temple over here that I didn't explore. Let's be nice and careful. Wait, another skeleton head. I'm taking this right away. Thank you very much. You can... Okay, there's a sensor over here. Let's be careful. I found you and I found you. Let's get out of here. Okay, what do we got? Ooh, more echo shards. Yes. And what's in the other one? 
More disc fragments, let's go. And diamond horse armor, this is great, dude. Okay, let's not overstay our welcome. Let's actually just head out over, I believe it's this way. There's the lava, there's the water, and there's the opening. Here's the portal, and yep, there we go. Let's get safely back into the nether. Taking a rocket instead this time, we also hooked up the brand new Tadpole Nurseries to the nether highway as well. This will take us over to the Arctic Zone where we have Bees Ginston and Gees Binston living. What's up, Bees? How you doing? And where's Gees at? Is Gees still- Gees is still over- You know what? I like your style, Gees. Do what you gotta do. Looks like Gees actually might need some help. Wait, wait. Are you gonna get yourself unstuck? Mm, nope, never mind. But this is a tadpole nursery, and actually, well, right now all of them are frogs, but it used to be a tadpole nursery. Right now it's kind of just a little frog sanctuary. But I just wanted somewhere nice to hang out while we have all of these tadpoles turn into frogs. So I kind of just built a little cabin nestled right into the ice. I tried to make it as cozy as possible, and I brought two villagers out here so that they can live here too. These guys are living life, man. They can go ice fishing right here all they want. So the video that came out right before this episode was the Tadpole Nursery Long Play, and that was in the Swamp Biome, which we haven't really hooked up to the Nether Highway system yet, so we're gonna fly out there instead. Ooh, there is an ocean monument right down here. We still need to drain an ocean monument, and we need to make a guardian farm. There is too much to do in this game. Moon's going down, and it looks like the sun's coming right up just in time for us to get to the swamp. There we go, here it is in all its glory. We finally made it a couple thousand blocks later. This right here is the tadpole nursery for the swamp biome frogs. What's going on buds, how you doing in here? Again, all these guys used to be tadpoles, but uh, obviously they are now frogs. Let's head out though, I do want to hook up a nether portal, probably, uh, let's actually just go right in the water. This right here just looks like the epitome of Minecraft, I'm loving it. Let's, uh, let's get this thing sparked up. I'm gonna put on my gold pants actually right before I do that, and there we go, let's see exactly where this takes us. Okay, we are in the middle of a cave? We're in the middle of the basalt delta somewhere, and I might just have to dig our way out of here. Well, I'm actually realizing right now that we are kind of close to the nether roof, so I need to dig down. This thing, we just got put way up at the ceiling. What we're gonna do then is take a note of the coordinates right here and then move it down to the same Y level as the nether highway so that we can connect these. Right now, just flying home is gonna be easier than digging ourselves out of that roof. Get a couple rockets up high in the sky and then we should be able to just glide back from here. And we can glide on down to the nearest portal. I'm glad that we made this one, but we really gotta get that other one at the swamp set up. Back home and before I forget, I wanna put some swift sneak on these golden leggings that I use in the nether. Now that I have Swift Sneak on my Netherite leggings out here, it kind of feels weird in the Nether without the Swift Sneak. So let's uh, let's just put these pants right back on the wall. Oh wait, hold on, right here, and then we'll use them next time. Ooh, and the sun's coming up. This is gonna be a good day. Not sure if I showed also since I'm looking this direction. On stream recently, I just decided to build a tadpole sanctuary right next to the home here, so that we had frogs that were always growing. We could have used the regular frog sanctuary, but you know me, I like to have a build that's dedicated to every single mob. So I thought this right here would be a fine addition to uh, the little pathway that we have. But enough distractions, let's get some emeralds and put that glass back in the highway. I'm gonna sprint on over to the librarian trading hall, shut the door behind me, and here we are, the glass factory. What's up dude, thank you for the glass. And what's up dude, thank you for the mending. I always forget how loud it can get down here because there's 24 librarians down here and there's also like 12 farmers right next to us, so it gets a little hectic. I would say we probably have enough now. Let's take this back to the nether and see what we can do with it. This one block of glass right here and one on the other side. This actually just blocks the boat from getting down onto the slabage down below and it makes us go super fast. Not sure how I forgot this, but we can get it done real quick. And I wanted to get some torch flowers right at the entrance, so now we should be able to get the zoomies. Oh yeah, this thing goes super fast. Okay, we are good to go on this side. And the best part about the zoomies is being able to get the zoomies all the way back into this nether hub right here. Oh, uh, and I'm glitching into the ice. Which is somehow just glitching all of these sensors and uh, okay, I don't know what's going on. And we made it out, that was weird. And there goes the boat, see you later dude. You know what, fine boat, we didn't need you anyways. And now that we're done here, let's uh, let's just go hang on the overworld a little bit. We've been here for like a week. The nether's great and all, but sometimes you just gotta get back into the overworld and uh, do a build out here. Let's head on over to the gold board. I wanna smack something off there today because uh, we've been kind of ignoring it. 
Something that has been here for a very, very long time is the Toolsmith Trading Hall, which actually happens to be the last trading hall. There's no more villager jobs after this, so let's go ahead and get this one done. I'm excited. This guy's excited too, you can see it. It is good to be back here in the normal colored blue sky. Not everything's covered by netherrack. This is awesome. What's up, little man? How you doing? You know what? Let's say what's up to John. I bet he's back here still. John, my boy, what's going on? How you been? You keep doing you, man. You just keep doing you. What's up, Daniel? How you doing? You hiding behind that pumpkin? What's going on? How you doing? Buddy, you are in the way of me and Daniel bonding right now, and uh, I need you to just, you know what? You get to the bottom of the ocean and think about what you've been doing. We will be seeing you later, sir. Anyways, Daniel, what's going on? I hope you've been doing well. I hope your friend over here has been doing well, too. Daniel's friend has been on a raft for, like, a month or so. Seems to be doing all right, though. I'm looking for Stu right now, because I want to say hi to Stu, but uh, the free-range camel that is Stu is uh, missing right now. He seems to just do whatever he wants. Sometimes I think I'll see Stu in the distance, but it's just a stack of hay bales. Can't really find him right now, but Stu's going to come out of hiding soon enough. We can go say hi to Perry, though. And go on the outskirts of town over here to where the pandas play. This is not Perry, though. I think we have Perry all the way over here. Are you Perry? Nope. Uh, are you Perry? Uh, nope. Have any of you guys seen Perry? Dude, pandas go wandering off too, it seems like. I, how far do we have to go to find Perry the panda? We are pretty far out here, and I'm starting to see some red mushroom lamps, which means we are approaching the mushroom farm. There it is. I'm seriously doubting that Perry the Panda made his way all the way to the mushroom sanctuary. Like, uh, I doubt- yeah, there's no way. This is like a thousand blocks away. Okay, so it's official. Perry and Stu are both missing right now. Will we be able to find them? I'm not sure. Stu, I know he's been lost before and we found him, but this is the first time we've lost Perry the Panda, so we are- we're probably gonna have to take down that forest to find him. Probably stuck between two birch trees. And Santa, what are you doing? Not on the cake? Get on the cake? No, not on the bed, bud. You just need to get on the cake. That's what I'm talking about, bud. Stay right there on that cake. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys haven't seen Perry, have you? The last trading hall we made was this leather worker hall trading hall, and, uh, we have some chickens and or ducks up here. With this mighty fine custom aquarium down here. And, of course, it's raining. It always is raining in this world. Could sleep the rain away. That is much better. Now, there is one commonality between all of the training halls that we've made so far, and that is that they are all on land. So, in order to make the Toolsmith Trading Hall a little bit different, let's, uh, let's go out into the ocean. We have a lot of open space to work with out here. I've been meaning to put something here for a very long time, and I think right now is that time. And before we get any of these villagers moved in, I'll get a basic structure going out here. I'll have to plop down to the bottom of the ocean floor and just get a nice little square going. This tower is going to look somewhat like the mob farm, but it's going to have more of these gray-toned blocks. Swift Sneak Underwater works so well. It makes building these structures a lot faster. Like, we got this big square up here in no time, and we also started building up a little bit. This is probably going to be more of an Aztec-looking temple, but I'd like to have some lava flowing down from the side, so we're probably going to have to use some nether wood. The first row goes up by five blocks, but these next rows are only ascending up by three. I kind of just want a gradual ascension up here, and then at the very top, we'll have a little bit of a hangout spot with a staircase going up. Man, I can't believe it took me this long to go to the deep, dark biome. Swift Sneak is amazing. Building these large structures is probably going to take like half the time now. It's going to be a very grayscale-looking temple until we get the wood in here. I think some deep slate tile walls are going to work here as well. Did I mention I love building with Swift Sneak? Well, I should probably sleep. This thing is turning into a little bit of a mob farm down here. We got some spiders up here, too. We don't want anybody accidentally exploding on us, and we actually have a whole gang over here. We got a creeper, there's a zombie that's hiding. I see a spider up in the corner. What are you doing, dude? Lighting up the corners here. I think we're going to go every three blocks, alternating the crimson fence gates and the warped fence gates. And this should be providing enough interior lighting over here that the mob stops spawning. Let's get this place lit up over here, and not too bad. Looks a little Christmassy, but uh, these are the only wood types that actually don't burn. We're going to put the lava on the outside here. So I know it'll be falling from this block here and all the way over here on this block as well. So I want to, maybe let's just test it out. The worst that could happen is it turns some of the water into some cobblestone or some stone itself. Maybe let's, uh, I wonder if we have to guide the lot. No, it's actually going to do its own thing. Let's go ahead and put that there. Let's put that there. That's kind of nice. Okay, so this will actually give us a little bit more decoration help. Now that we know the path of the lava, we'll be able to put some stairs here. Put this down, and this down, and the lava is just snaking its way down. This here, is the lava gonna spread? Nope, it's gonna fall direct- yes! Okay, it's gonna go right into the hole, and then this? 
block right here of water is probably going to turn into stone. Or obsidian, we'll see. And, oh, it's just stone. Perfect. Buddy, I'm trying to take a step back to look at the build, and you are most definitely in the way. Please be gone. Okay, perfect. This looks great. We just need to have the lava go symmetrical on all four sides, and we need to beef up these little decoration spots right here. We'll have these corner blocks tower up a little bit taller than the others. Back home real quick. On second thought, I'm thinking instead of using some deep slate for the outside, maybe some nether bricks would work. We'll get these turned into nether brick walls. I like how dark they are still, and they go along with the nether vibe of the wood types that we're using. This lava just made its way in here right now. Oh, perfect. Get this guy in the middle here. We got one, two, three blocks on each side. Perfect. I love working with odd numbers. Ooh, you can see little lava particles flowing through the stone now on the other side. Let's see, though, real quick. I want to take a look at the colors and see if they at least work. Nice. Colors looking great so far. It definitely adds a lot above the grayscale tone of the rest of this build. Let's see if we can get the other piece of lava. I think we actually just put it right here. Let's get that right there and that right there. It should just flow down. Let's give it a little bit of guidance. Block this off here, and it should go right down into here. I'm going to wait patiently for the lot. There it is. What's good, buddy? You can just get right down on in there. Thank you very much. There we go. Okay, another stone block acquired. Getting a little dangerous here. I'm trying to replace all of these. Let's get this upside down stair right here and there. The lava should stop going here, and I kind of want to stop it from going right here as well. Let's break that and that, and the lava is back on track. On the bottom where the lava's flowing, let's make a small pocket for the lava to get caught into. I think we can get some upside down stairs right here to make this thing look a little bit more smooth. We'll stack these bricks here, then we'll go stair, upside down stair, stair to upside down stair, and let's use some nether brick walls, and that's, uh, that's not looking too bad. Let's take a step back. Ooh, I like- wait, let's add two walls to the bottom. Not bad at all. It looks like a nice little fireplace. Let's repeat this design all the way around. It's easily replicable. Well, I may have spoken a little bit too soon. This one right here is definitely broken. I think the issue is this, and then actually breaking this one. There we go. So these aren't looking too bad. I think I'd like to put some deep slate on the corners, though. I'd also like to alternate the warped fence gates and the crimson fence gates on the top and the bottom. Let's add one more nether brick wall with an end rod that's going to hold that up. And just for texturing, let's take out this corner block. Let's put some iron bars in there. Ooh, I like that a lot. Let's hop over this. We'll put the deep slate tiles in there. We'll put this on the bottom this time. We'll put these on top. We're actually going to break one hole. I'm probably going to do this on all of them, but let's put one frog light and then the iron bars in. Ooh. You know, even with all the nether blocks, you can still find a way to bring out the rainbow in your builds. Keep doing this all the way around. Keep hopping. All these fence gates look great, but let's put some iron trap doors on top. And then to the sides of them, it looks like we are missing something. We could use some nether brick slabs, but the color is starting to get a tad bit repetitive, so let's use some red nether brick slabs, but uh, that's going to require getting some nether warts, so let's let's head over to that farm real fast. We haven't had a reason to stop into the nether wart farm in a very long time. Let's take all this out. For a long time, we've just been brewing potion with this, but now we can finally use it for building. Let's go back home real quick to grab some nether bricks. Go to the very top floor. I should have a couple. Yep, there we go. Put you right here, you right here, and you guys right here, and there we go. I'm going to turn these into slabs, and we'll see what this ends up doing. Ooh, these are looking spicy. I don't know why it took me this long to use this block, but dude, these are so bright red. I'm going to start incorporating this into other builds, too. These are looking great. Building around all this lava is actually becoming very peaceful. It's actually something I can get used to. Last episode, I spent the whole time in the nether, and now we're basically bringing the nether here. Let's trapdoor a couple more of these up real quick. Gotta finish getting all these frog lights in on this lower level. Also, I was thinking I don't believe candles burn next to lava, so I think on the regular nether brick I'm gonna have sets of three candles on all of these. I feel like these will add some much needed ambiance and- oh, okay, I guess the flames on me will add some much needed ambiance too. Sun is rising and we are up early in the morning. This thing's not looking too bad. We got a couple more of these frog lights to place. Let's get the top level done here. For some reason, I am always on fire. I, I absolutely just, I, I don't understand. Maybe I should just get some fire res potion, but you know what? Nah. I think that's the last frog light right there, but we are out of white candles, so I actually probably should go to the bone meal farm, or the skeleton XP farm, rather. I know down here right now we have a bunch of bone meal left over from the last time I was AFKing, and we can turn all of that into white dye. And we are here. Let's see what do we got. And that's that's plenty. We should be able to turn this into three stacks of bone meal, three stacks of white dye. That is all right. We are on our way. 
I'm also gonna come over here and say hi to Napoleon. What's up, dude? I'm gonna hop in the boat. How you been, dude? What's going on with you? This guy still hasn't run out of arrows. I I, I think he's maybe shot like two to three thousand arrows. It I I think he's glitched out or something. He has not run out in months. All right, buddy, you uh, you just keep doing you, and uh, I'll be on my way. I'm leaving home with three stacks of white candles. That should be enough. Now I feel like we're just missing some sort of flower right here. I don't know which flower. I've been going with the ouch. I've been going with the torch flower a lot recently, and I'm thinking about going with it just one more time. Let's fly over to the torch flower circle real fast. I'll probably just go ahead and take this entire field here. I love torch flowers because they pretty much go along with any color palette that you put them with. Also, I was just thinking these stone brick pillars that we have right here are looking a little bit plain, so let's get a little bit of andesite wall to warp fence to chain to end rod action going. We'll probably just repeat that on every single pillar. Let's see if the inside looks as symmetrical. Well, it looks like there's a couple frog lights that I missed, but for the most part, it looks nice. And Oh, and there's another one. For the lighting in the middle, let's get a nice little glowstone tower. And wrapping around that, I'm going to have some deep slate stairs spiraling all the way up. Normally I would block this off in case villagers make their way up here, but I think this is going to be a tall enough staircase that if they happen to make it up, then good on them, dude. Let's just let them be up here. And we have reached the top, and I will get a house built up here or some sort of starter house looking structure, but uh, I kind of want to get the interior at least decorated a little bit and some of the villagers moved in. And to start off with the interior decorations, I think we'll keep it symmetrical and kind of line it up with these deep slate tile walls. I think eventually all of these will meet in the middle. These are all looking like they're about to connect up in the center, but I'm probably going to have to build a roof. And we should probably get a floor going too, because uh, we can't really scaffold effectively right now. I got a small idea going with the crimson stem. I think I'm going to use the crimson across over here diagonally, and we'll use the wart stem on these two. That is going to require me going back to the nether real quick though. This should be our last time over here. Wow, I something got caught on that rocket there. It only made me... Cl that was really slow. But I should have some wood here. Alright, there's a little bit. I should have some more. Alright, come on. Tell me. Please tell me I have some more. Aha, there it is. Okay, so we do have plenty. That should be enough to use for now. And while we're here, I want to show you guys something real quick to make these calibrated sensors a little bit quieter. We did a lot of this on stream, but if you have a comparator going into a lectern that has a book and quill in it, this is going to effectively stop all of that noise that they make, and all of a sudden it becomes a lot quieter around here. Slowly but surely, this place is going to get finely decorated. Let's fly back and see what we got going on here. Ooh, not too bad. Ooh, and the reflection makes it look cool too. We still have to get a dirt path going from all the way over here to the main island. All of the candles, torch flowers, and the ferns now. These are looking great. We have so much color in here. Also on the very end, on the tips of the nether bricks, I did add some of the soul campfires here. The fires might add just a little bit of ambiance. Never used stem as flooring, so I'm kind of excited to see how all of this turns out. The warped stems are actually one of my favorite blocks. I just don't have a lot of them, so I don't use it that often. I'll have to go spend a little bit more time on our warped stem farm. I think we'll use a little more of that white stained glass that we were using in the nether hub. Nice, looking good. Actually, I'm taking this away. I don't really like the way that the glass looks. Back to the stone bricks, thank you very much. The deep slate tile walls are definitely making the ceilings pop. We should get more trap doors around these frog lights up here too. Just makes it seem a little bit more full. And it seems to me in here that the villagers are probably about ready to move in. I think I just need to take away those fences. I actually just set up a couple of frog light statues over here so that they can all move in. Four on each corner. I have room for about 16 villagers here and room for 16 more if we want to get more in here. This pathway would be a real easy way of getting them over here, but we'll probably end up bringing them all over by boat. I do know of one guy that's hanging out by the bone meal center. He should be, yep, he's actually right here. What are you doing, dude? Break that lily pad. Let's get you in the... There we go, buddy. Let's get you over here into the water. Take this guy all the way around the island. Nice. Slowly approaching. This reflection is crazy. We also seem to have 15 other guys that showed up for the job. What's up, dudes? Thanks for being here. I appreciate y'all. Counting 16 villagers here. I'm actually going to make a dock with some spruce trap doors and use some deep slate as some pillars. I would like to get these guys over a little bit easier. Hopefully the spruce doesn't burn on the lavas. Let's get the... Yeah, better go find a job, buddy. Let's put this here. Let's put this here. Let's start breaking boats, and maybe these guys will all go start finding some jobs. Go take the jobs, buddies. Go take them all. Just gotta push this last guy inside. Come on, buddy. Yes, thank you very much, and we are good to go. All of them are crowding around this bed. This is mine, guys. I'm gonna block the staircase before any of them decide to climb up. Time to start placing water over and over until these guys get into their positions. 
I'm gonna chop that down. You're gonna hop in there. I'm gonna put that there. You have no choice, but oh wait, never mind. He fooled me. We're gonna try this again. You're gonna get in there. I'm going to put this right here, and you're gonna have no choice but to become another toolsmith. Let's get the last guy in his remaining spot right there. Perfection, and you are good to go. Let's take the water so there's no more noise. We now have 16 toolsmiths, man. This is awesome. That right there is the last trading hall in this world. We have all of them. Thank you guys, you're gonna be working for the rest of your days. Let's go outside real quick, I wanna show you a couple minor changes, like the amethyst right here, we put some candles down on the bottom. Path itself is just decorated with some cherry saplings, but we have amethyst up top. I wanted the corners to have that nice little purple shiny tint. And you might notice on the top we have a basalt castle tip, this is also lined up with some azalea bushes. And now it doesn't really seem like an Aztec temple so much with the castle top fly in on the dock here we have docks on all sides if we ever want to bring a boat over dude i am so happy thank you guys for watching this episode i really do appreciate it thank you for watching the live streams on twitch and again it is twitch.tv slash wax fraud feel free to come by anytime thank you to all the patreon supporters and all the youtube members hi everybody wax fraud here and welcome back to another episode of the hardcore minecraft let's play series we're actually heading over to the ancient city right now where i had recently hooked up another portal to a giant staircase and we'll pop through here. This was actually all built on a live stream. And thank you guys for coming to the YouTube live streams. We've been doing a lot more of those recently. And we're going to continue doing a lot more of them. We actually have a nice cozy home on the outside of this cave here. If you look down, we have the ancient city and the skulk all the way at the bottom. But uh, I decided to make it a little bit safer on our way down. Popping in, we have a nice little starter house area up here. And we have a giant staircase that leads all the way to the bottom. I have one set of gates here in case the warden decides to follow us up here. Because you know wooden gates are totally going to stop the warden. And here's another gate. Because you know two sets of gates are going to stop the warden. But we're in the ancient city now, and you'll notice that we have our nice cozy entrance all the way down into the deep dark land. It's so dark and desolate down here, but uh, that's about to change pretty soon. We're about to start moving some villagers down here. But first, we are making a skulk farm today. We're going to be grabbing a bunch of this stuff right here. While we're down here, though, on stream, I noticed there was a couple of shriekers that I did not cover up with wool, so I think we need to make our way over there. I want to keep some of the shriekers out here because I do want to spawn the warden eventually to be able to capture it. We actually have this guy right here. Let's bridge over real fast. We covered this shrieker up too for the most part. Let's see if we can take it out without any noise. And I'm now just realizing there was a shrieker right there. Man, I really got to be careful down here. Let's bridge over here real quick. I'm going to take this guy out. Oh no, that was bad. Why did I do that? Oh, I think we reset though, so we should be all good. This is the one shrieker around here though. I'm just going to place this, place this, and I know that this is going to burn real quick, so let's just do that real fast. Let's take you out. Let's get you out of here, you out of here, you out of here. If my memory serves me correctly, there is another skeleton skull down here, and voila, there we go. Oh my god, there was a shrieker right here. How did I not see this? What is happening? How did this thing not get set off? That's insane. I'm going to take you right now. Sir, you can come with me. Thank you very much. And now we can actually go over here and open up these chests. What do we got? Ooh, some more disc fragments. And we got other side. I've been looking for this for a while. Honestly, this hoe right here is pretty OP. If we found that early game, that'd be pretty nice. And the other one. Ooh, more disc fragments and some echo shards. Not bad. I keep finding places that I've missed all the way down here. There's a shrieker all the way up top. And I see two shriekers on a tower. We'll come back here next episode to get that taken care of because I am bringing some villagers down here. And I do not want the villagers setting off those shriekers. It's nice to be able to fly all the way back up here to a cozy home, though. And it's also nice to have this hooked up to the Nether Highway. Everywhere that's far away from home now, we have the Nether Highway hooked up to, so we've been getting to and from home very quickly. And now to get that Skulk Farm done that we were talking about earlier, the easiest way to get this done is going to be with a Skeleton Farm or a Zombie Farm. A Spider Farm would work too, I guess, but all of the other tutorials that I've seen have just been using Skeletons and Zombies, which leads me to believe that those work a lot better. I'm trusting a lot of those technical people that play the game here, and we're back at the cozy little zombie spawner. And that was pretty lucky timing. This little guy right here is actually the perfect example of why the skeleton spawner is a little bit better. We're going to want to use a dripstone, and these regular zombies that are dropping down, these guys are great for that, but uh, with that little block that's left open, the zombies, uh, these little guys, they can make it through. Now, all of these guys right here, if they're falling on a pointed dripstone, it's going to be a little bit better. One, because uh, you're going to get all that bone meal, and two, because there's no such thing as baby skeletons. Although, baby skeletons would be pretty cool if that was added into the game. Now, we don't have any skeleton XP farms that I can think of that we've found, but there is one zombie XP farm that we have found. 
all the way by the spiral mine shaft, we actually ran into one while we were digging the hole. This was an 11 by 11 hole, and we had actually dug out on the back left side right here. There was a zombie spawner. I'm gonna have to go all the way down to find it. I believe it's right there, but I'm gonna actually go behind the scenes and dig myself down in there. And there it is. Okay, so we're actually right on top, and I have it fully torched up, so nothing should spawn. Now, it would make it a lot easier on us just to use this, but I don't want to have to dig into the spiral mine shaft right here. And there's a possibility that there's a skeleton XP spawner up here in the mines. I am hearing some spiders, so I know there's a spider spawner down here somewhere. But if we dig up, we can get ourselves a better look at these hanging mine shafts. Been a while since we went caving, but uh, I think it's better late than never. Also, if we find some enchanted golden apples in here, that wouldn't be too bad. See you, buddy. Everywhere in here is a spot that a creeper will fall from. Exactly right there. If it can happen, then it will happen. Big on, sir. Okay, get out of here, please. And be gone. I have a lot of this lit up down here, but I do want to show you guys real quick how the Skulk Catalyst works. And that guy is holding on to some tough... That's my tough, dude. What are you doing? But I'll float down here real fast. Hopefully there's no creepers that are jumping back around here. We have a slime right here. There's a zombie right there, too. Let's just, you know, get out of here. Whoa. Okay, that was pretty... Okay, that was nuts. That was a little unexpected. I meant to get the slime right here, but uh, I guess the skulk kind of changed too. There we go. That's exactly right here. That's how the skulk farm is going to work. Basically, anytime you kill a mob right next to the skulk catalyst, it's going to turn any blocks around here into the skulk. As long as it's a deep slate or a stone-like block, it will change. I just keep climbing up here, and there's just more and more. I keep climbing up this mine shaft, and there's more and more to light up. This is super cool. This is a part of the 1.19 update that I never really appreciate. If I find a mineshaft early game, I kind of just come in here real quick and find a chest and make my way out as quickly as possible. Ooh, we got some diamonds over here. You be gone, and you be gone. I think we're coming up on a... Yep, this is a cave spider spawner. I believe over here we're coming up on a cave spider spawner. Let's see you later, dude. Is there uh, something stuck? Is that a skeleton right there? Okay, the cave spiders are here, and they're trying to poison us for sure. Get out of here, dude. Get out. All right, well, I mean, everything's getting stuck in here. If we can get over here a little bit faster, I'd like to be able to get a little bit of this and break that. We don't necessarily need... There we go. And be gone. I'll get you with the pickaxe, sir. Wait, is there another spider spawner? Right, I think this is... Oh my god, this is... Hold up, let's break this. We don't need all these cave spider spawners right next to us here right now. Let's get this out of the way. Let's break that. There we go. There are plenty of cave spider spawners around, so let's just break any of them that we see right now. This place is so cool. It'd be nice to turn actually one of these into a village, too. Revamping all the naturally generated structures is so much fun. I can't wait to get all that done. And, ooh, we have an amethyst geode right here. I'm hearing a lot of baby zombies, but I don't know where they... Okay, there's two of them right here. This guy is stuck. See you later, dude. Sorry about it. It's like a giant open space of oak planks right here. What is happening? What is this? This is one of the biggest mine shafts that I've ever explored. Well, let me tell you, if you are in need of chains early game, you got a lot of them right here. Ooh, more diamonds. I'll take those. Thank you very much. Ooh, there's stuff above us that could drop. That's never good. Let's go up these stairs. Looks like I might have been up here to place that torch, and I do see a treasure chest all the way down here. What do we got? Some gold, some activator rails, and a name tag. Not too bad. We can buy all of our name tags now, but the more the merrier. I'm loving all these free rails right now. Getting very deep into this mine shaft here. I'm starting to run into a bunch of dead ends. Starting to hear some Endermen too. Please no creepers be around here. Just a zombie right there. I did see a... Yep, there's a skeleton there. Get away, dude. Back off. And what do you know? We got another one. Let's get down there nice and easy. Looks like the Endermen have been having a little bit of fun down here. What do we got? Picking up a lot of rails here. It would actually be pretty cool if these mine shafts generated some more pottery shirts. More free rails, yum yum yum. I keep thinking that I've lit everywhere up and I'll just take another turn and then there's a whole nother dark hallway. Like this right here, now we're just basically in a cave. And pretty lucky right here, golden apple, let's go. Okay, I'll take that, let's mine right here, thank you. And that's why you just keep searching. We went all the way back, where are we right now? We're just in the middle of nowhere. I am hearing quite a few ske- oh, there he is. I was gonna say, there's a couple more I think that I hear too. Ow, dude, come on, get at- hey, whoa, get out of here. You, sir, were not invited. Please get out of here. Thank you very much. Looks like there's another one at the end of this hallway. Almost there. What do we got? Not bad, dude. Let's take it out. I'm still hearing skeletons, though. I cannot tell which wall they're coming from, though. Like, there's an abnormal amount of skeletons. Let's just, let's dig this way a little bit. Running into a water cave. I don't think the skellies would actually be over this direction. Let's go this way. Something's gotta be down this hallway. 
Those skeleton noises are getting a tad bit louder. Just been kind of going at it from every angle that I possibly can. Okay, I'm almost certain that this is a skeleton spawner because there's way too many skeleton noises. Okay, hold up. Okay, that's, yep, that's, that's definitely a spawner right there. Let's break this and, ouch, and you be gone. You be gone. You be gone. A lot of skeletons to have to be gone. I'll see you all later, buddies. Broke the, oh my god. Okay, see ya. No, see ya. Oh, they're in a battle with each other. This is great. Okay, you guys just fight each other and I will just continue going this way a tad bit. I don't really hear that many more skeletons. I'm going to light this up as quickly as I can. And I think they actually might be just around this corner. Actually, they might have all just climbed up here. So we might be in the clear. Let's put a torch up there. We can actually block this off just a little bit. And we have ourselves a skeleton spawner. Let's go. What do we have in the chest? Another name tag. Another other. What? We found two other sites in one episode. If a third one rolls around, that'd be crazy. Now, this is actually not going to be like the other skeleton spawner where we dig this out four ways on each side and put some water down so that they can go into a water elevator and fall down for me to just hack away at them for some XP. On this one, they're all going to spawn and the water is going to bring them all to a specific center location where they're going to fall probably close to some bedrock. And so for efficiency, we're going to actually just continue taking out that 4x4 four four in each direction. We'll get this place all nice and cleaned up. Taking out the ceiling, and I can still hear some skeletons above me. Let's close this exposed wall up right here with some cobblestone. Close this up right here, and then we should be able to just move down three more blocks. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. That should leave one exposed block in the middle. Let's see if we go right down. I wonder how far that goes. Ooh, we got some surprise diamonds. Let's go. So I can see the bedrock from right here, which isn't necessarily the best thing because we want these skeletons to get some critical damage all the way down here. So what we'll do is we'll actually take away these and we'll put some blocks up to get the water up one more. And we're going to do the classic water elevator to get the skeletons up just a little bit higher. So if I hook this up right, all of these skeletons should drop down after they spawn up into this water column that is not necessarily a column yet because I haven't put the kelp there. But all the skeletons will get raised up over here and then drop down what will be their imminent death. We've got an open space here. This is where they're all going to fall into. So right now we're looking at about a 20 block drop. It could have gone a little bit less, but I just wanted to play it a little bit safe. So in order to get the zombies to fall down this hole, let's take out all of the kelp right here so that this bubble column can start. Smack that bottom kelp and everything should start rushing. Let's take this torch out and then we will tower ourselves up out of here. Let's create a barrier here so I don't accidentally fall out. And for the moment of truth, let's take out that torch, that torch, that guy, and that guy. Okay, the skeletons have already started spawning. All right, and we have a completely dark cube. Let's back up and close that off. Now, I don't have an official way to get in and out right now, so we have a little bit of a ladder system. I want to see if I can beat the skeletons down there. I want to see it turn to skulk. I just heard one fall right then and there. And yo, I just heard one fall again. Are we going to get any skulk here? And another one fell. Hmm, no skulk yet. That's kind of strange. I wonder if the slabs were messing it up. Let's take these out. Whoa, nothing yet. Dang, this, the sound that the skulk catalyst makes is nuts. Let's try moving the catalyst back just a block or two. Whoa, there. Okay, still nothing. What's going on here? Move the dripstone down by one block. Let's see if that helps out at all. And I didn't see anything right there. What is... Okay, and nothing again. What is going on? So I think I figured it out. The dripstone was actually the thing that was causing the problem. I thought the dripstone was the thing that was going to increase the efficiency of this, but there you go. The dripstone was the one thing that was actually blocking it. So this farm actually does work. This is perfect. I think in order to get an extra space right here, maybe... Okay, actually, we're gonna have to bring the wall back too. Did you see that? Okay, we're gonna have to bring a lot of this deep slate back, maybe about three, four blocks. Okay, this is awesome. I cannot believe we have a working skulk farm. It's about time, dude. Can always get a little bit of XP from the skulk, but for now, let's get this replaced. I'm gonna pick all this up before the next guy drops down. I think I'm gonna make a 15 by 15 room. This skulk catalyst right here can actually have an eight block radius of detection. Ooh, okay. It looks like it works up here too. And wow, we really need to bring the walls back still. This is actually going to open up the tunnel that we had built on stream. Starting off, I lined up every three spaces with some polished basalt with some regular basalt on the corners. I wanted an easier way to get to this skulk farm, so we have a long hallway that actually goes all the way up to that mossy pathway. Takes a second to get up here, but uh, if we just take a little bit of a right on that mossy pathway, we can get over here in no time. We gotta hop back down, though. We gotta complete that hallway. Also, I'd like to make a stone generator. 
Take some chiseled, polished black stone. We'll throw it along the edges here, and then I think behind them we'll throw a glowstone. That'll actually bring a little bit of nice light to this hallway. To bring a little color on the hallway, let's actually just make the floor entirely out of moss. We'll just bone meal our way all the way back down to the Skulk Farm. There is some lava that's about to poke through, but luckily the moss is not burning. Let's take that down. Let's break the end of the hallway here. Okay, so now we're at the Skulk Farm, and we have a lot of Deep Slate to keep replacing this Skulk with, but I don't want to keep on using the Deep Slate. I'd rather honestly just use a Stone Generator. By the way, it would be amazing if there was a Deep Slate Generator. So we're going to continue to clear out the walls here so they stop turning into Skulk from this farm, but I think off to the left side, we'll actually make a little bit of a hole to put this generator. First things first, you're going to want to double chest. Let's get four hoppers hooked up to that. We're going to get some stairs that are facing the hoppers. Once all the walls are up, make sure you have a sign right there so that you can waterlog all of these stairs and make sure that nothing runs out. You don't have to, but I'm just going to waterlog all of them. Add one more layer of regular blocks. Then just make sure to close it off before you put a lava bucket in the middle here. Now that's actually just turning everything to stone here like that, and you can actually AFK and go four blocks like this until it all turns back into stone. You might have to get past the sound of the lava and the water getting into contact here, because it's a lot of hissing, but uh, if you can move past that, then you're going to be just fine. After about a minute, let's see, what do we have on the side here? And we already have more than a stack, that's crazy. And it's just this nice little compact setup here, you have the lava up top, you got the water down below, and you got the little chest in the back. Now let's just make this place look a little bit nicer, let's clear out the rest of these walls. I'm thinking we need to make a perimeter here. Let's actually go one, two, three, four, five, six blocks to the edge, and then we'll go on the seventh block. Let's go one down. Well, looks like I'm exposing the original ladder that I took into here. All good things must come to an end. We now have a bubble column. Finish up the corner here. The coolest thing about the skulk spreading is that it actually gets stopped by these slabs. Let's clear this up real quick. Let's take some stone and get to replacing over here. We finally don't have to use any of the deep slate. There we go, it should be- yeah, it doesn't go anywhere past the slabs. And the stone is getting taken over, this is perfect. Sorry skeletons, but this is, uh, this is the way it has to be. So what I did was actually move the cobblestone generator all the way up at the top. I decided to cover it up with some deep slate tile walls too, and we moved it all the way to the back. And it looks like some shriekers are actually starting to spawn now, which is not gonna be good- oh my god, there's more- there's two of them! Oh, actually there's three, this is- oh my god. Under the frog light, we're having a little bit of an issue catching some of these materials, so I think we're going to have to catch a little bit of a hopper system right down here. Of course, there is a shrieker under here where I'm trying to put the hoppers. Let's get you out. Dude, these things are spawning so much. There's more sensors already. One just spawned right before our eyes. I am learning very quickly that this is a very loud farm. We'll start with a double chest, and we'll line up some hoppers going all the way to the end. We're gonna have to take out this frog light for a second, get a little dangerous, and we'll put that there. Let's go up here. Got that glass back in, and put a stone piece right there. We're good to go. I just want to see if this works, and okay, it doesn't look like there's any items right there. Is the chest getting filled up? And it is. This is perfect. What I'll do is cover this up right here. It's starting to get pretty dark in here, so I think the quartz on the floor in between some of this deep slate and probably on the walls is gonna be the best move. This is looking nice and smooth already. I think what'll look even smoother is actually just in the corner putting some crimson stem, and I think we might leave it unstripped. That's, ooh, that's nice. And if these went from the ceiling all the way over to the middle of the farm, actually, let's get the hyphae over here. It's kind of a weird name for a block, the crimson hyphae. That's looking clean. I love the contrast of these colors. Back to mindlessly placing blocks. Wow, it's already looking so much brighter in here. Let's replace these four blocks right here with some ochre frog lights so it just looks a little bit nicer. The walls are built up and we gotta start thinking about the scaffolding that is in the way of getting the ceiling done. I have, as you can see, the glass tube kind of risen all the way up here as high as I can go. I might bring it up a couple more blocks. Kind of funny, we have the pyramid effect going again in back-to-back -back episodes. We get the glass replaced up in here, so there shouldn't be anything able to fall out. The pyramid effect, I don't think, is able to go any further. I have the water tunnel that's going right above that deep slate block. So if I were to go up to the stone generator here and I break this block, one block right here, that's actually where the skeleton farm is. And if I break that, it'll just open up a whole can of worms. So that is going to be the limit for our pyramid effect here. I think in the corners, actually, let's just use some glowstone and then maybe we'll tear us down with some blackstone and some deep slate. 
The skeletons live in the darkness, and then they come all the way over here to a nice bright surprise. I'm gonna take this layer of deep slate out, and then let's get it replaced. We'll do chiseled polished blackstone on every other block, and then let's see chiseled deep slate right here. Ooh, that's not looking too bad, and I fell. I'm noticing now that these chiseled blocks are not really directional. Like, if I place it like this, it's gonna face that way, and if I place it like this, it's just still gonna face that way. Same with the blackstone blocks, too. I guess it doesn't really matter, though, too much. It's still pretty cool the way they're textured. We have an unlimited amount of glowstone, so I'm probably just going to repeat this pattern up here on the ceiling. Okay, actually, I lied. We have some glowstone still up there, but now we have some hanging azalea plants, and we use the blue ice and the packed ice alternating all the way down. We'll finish this off with a chain and an end rod right there. Hop on the ground here, and the ceiling is actually starting to take some of the colors of the sky, which is kind of nice because we're all the way down here at bedrock. We'll line up the last row with some hoppers over here. And on the wall right here, we're using some red nether brick and some end stone alternating, but with the quartz stairs back behind, just to give the crimson stem a break, we're going to use some warp stem back there, but sideways. I also thought that only end rods over here would look cool, but we're going to alternate with some lightning rods as well. And even with half the end rods, it's still going to be just as lit up. On those corner frog lights, let's go ahead and put some torch flowers in there. I've been experimenting on the floor a little bit. I've been trying to use a lot of reflective blocks like this blue ice and the gold pressure plates. The quartz on the wall is super reflective as well as you can see the end rod is reflecting. The gilded black stone is a little bit shiny and I thought it would be kind of cool to add all of these diamond ore blocks that we have been digging up. We actually found 47 of them. Now that right there is that's not looking too bad. And I know they're called heavy-weighted pressure plates, but I'm just going to call them the iron pressure plates because that's really what they are. We get a higher angle over here. Ooh, this is looking good. We have like a little throne that's leading up over into the stone generator. I'm loving the reflective blocks on the floor and all of these end rods on the ceiling. We can run up into our throne and go grab as much stone as we possibly can. I also had an idea that we could use to connect the tunnel to this giant opening that we made here. Let's actually use some crimson stem and go all the way down. Bring a little bit more color to this mossy hallway. Next, I was thinking we could actually hide some redstone blocks in between the crimson stems. We could put some powered rails on top and use all of these rails that we had found in the mine shafts. Now we can just lazily use a minecart to get back and forth. I actually have one right here. See you later, buddy. It's not like I was going to use you right now. And I actually thought this hallway was finished with the decorations. I just keep thinking of new things to put on the sides here. We're going to use some deep slate brick walls. Then we're going to alternate some lime candles and some white candles. We'll light all these up and we have an... Oh my god! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. Yeah, light these up. We have a nice warm ambient vibe. Hopefully there's no fire that starts. Beautiful. I love having rail systems that take you to the farm. Oh my god, we've collected four stacks now of the Skulk sensors. Get some barrels hooked up right here so that we can actually just store some of this stuff. We don't have to have it right on the farm anymore. These middle sections of quartz are looking a little bit less bright than the ice counterparts. So let's actually put some end rods on the sides here and hook them up with some chains. That, ooh, that's gonna be great. I take a little bit of scaffolding, but we can do that all the way around. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. Can't forget the bop, boom, bang, and bing. Actually, on second of thought, again, we should replace some end rods. Every other one will alternate with some lightning rods. Every time I turn around, there's like 20 more sensors behind me, dude. These guys are so loud. The final chain has been placed. Let's see if we can go down and... Ooh, that... See, that adds so much light. The ceiling is so much more vibrant. There's a few more minor decorations that I'd like to add, starting with these iron gates. Ooh, let's get that clay pot out of there. Let's get these iron gates right here. And next, I was thinking along these hoppers on every other one. Let's put a chain down. We'll put a plant down. And then we're also going to alternate between some ferns and some cactuses. There's not that many plants that reach all the way to the chain. Fern is one of them and cactus is one of them. You can also use azalea. I know bamboo is really good for that as well. Again, we have a bunch of sensors here. And if you look right here, we actually have one dude. I think he has some feather falling boots on because there's no way he could have survived that fall. Luckily, with one little swipe, he's gone. And that just created two sensors alone right there, so at least if they fall and we swipe at them, it still does create some skulk. I think we did a pretty good job of making this build feel like it's not all the way down at Bedrock. It's starting to feel like a nice and cozy home down here. Small detail missed right here. Looks like there's two blocks I almost completely forgot to put in. Let's put you right there and you right there. I also have an idea to make this part of the quartz ceiling a little bit less smooth looking. And if we replace these with these smooth quartz stairs, that actually starts to look a lot more textured. I do a lot of detailing already with buttons, trapdoors, all of the wooden blocks, but I need to get a little bit better at detailing with slabs and stairs themselves. And with the stairs, you can actually make some cool designs in the ceiling just like this. It might be fun to use some dripstone here. We were going to use it initially on this farm, but if we have it hanging from the ceiling, we can give it a use. 
let's put these sensors back here. Actually, I want to see how many bones we've been collecting so far. Oh my god, we have so many down here. Now that's just great. And you know what we could do? Let's get all of the loot from the ancient city and bring it on down here. This will give me the opportunity to show you guys what we did on the latest YouTube stream. Head up the bubble elevator real fast. And before you know it, you end up in the house. And wait a second, hold up. I actually do have two oak signs we can just put here right now for the bed ledge. And this is the first floor interior of our starter house. We had actually built this over about a three and a half hour long YouTube stream. Thanks for showing up if you did. We'll fly out here a little bit of a ways and give you guys a better look. We just built a brand new starter house floating here in the ocean. Looks the same from both sides. We're going to come over here on Dog Island. And don't, guys, we will, we will get a home for these dogs. I do promise that. But I love this house. It's nice and cozy. It doesn't really serve any purpose other than to house the entrance to the Skulk Farm. Tried to make it look as detailed as possible, though, in case any villagers do decide to move in here. But there is a second floor they can actually get up to and an attic all the way up top. Got some nice views of the nether portal from here. And the back side over here is the exact same, but it connects up to this moss pathway that we had built a while back. I guess it's not really a floating house if I have these jungle log stilts on the front porch and the back porch. I'm looking at the side of the house here. I could probably put some more jungle logs here as well. Let's fly home real fast. Let's grab all of the ancient city loot and those jungle logs. I'll take all of you guys right here, and I believe the shulker box with everything from the ancient city is right here. Yep, let's take it down to the basement. Before we head back down, let's go right here, and I think we can line ourselves up right to this guy. We can bring the jungle log up this way. Go over one block and get one right next to it. Get the cluster on the top to stay consistent, and then we'll go all the way down and strip this log. And, alright, that's not too bad. Now we have the front and back matching the sides of the house. It doesn't look like it's really floating anymore, and it does look like it's more structured. Now we can head back down and finally unload this light blue shulker box. So, what do we have? We do have a lot of skulk. Oh, echo shards. I need to actually put a place here for them. What I'm gonna do is actually put the skulk catalyst right here, because the skulk itself, I'm gonna take upstairs to the sea level, because I'm gonna use that for building. Get all of the rest of these put away here. We have so many Skulk sensors now, and I believe we have enough music disc fragments to make this disc finally. Yes, we do. We can put it right next to our other other side. I also realized I don't really have a use for these Echo Shards because I'm playing in hardcore mode, and uh, yeah, so just <laughs> there's absolutely no use for them. Unless there is a use for them, and I'm just not thinking of it, please let me know in the comments below if I'm just not thinking of it. On the corners, I think it'd be cool if we use some large amethyst buds. Instead of the clusters, we're always using the clusters, so we gotta give the large amethyst buds a little bit of love. Let's sprinkle these all over the entrance as well. And every other block around the Skulk Farm actually wouldn't hurt as well. And there we have it, the last one placed down. We might be good except for up here in our little stone generator throne. Let's get some on the sides like that. We'll get one right here, here, and there. As well as the corners of our ice square up at the top of the ceiling. And I think we have ourselves a nice Skulk XP farm. Guys, we did it. Thank you all so much for watching. This build was super fun to make. I spent a, quite a few hours on the Twitch streams and the YouTube streams making all of this. And I really do appreciate you guys spending the time with me on the live streams. It really does mean a lot. I'm gonna get the last four torch flowers up here just for a tad bit more decoration. And boom, that is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate y'all. Thank you to all the new YouTube members, all of the Twitch subscribers, and the Patreon supporters. And away we go! No, what? How did that happen? Hi everybody, Waxfraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. Today, we are transforming an ancient city. The goal is to get a lot of villagers down there, get them working, and make that place feel as lively as possible. First, I do want to show you guys that Skulk Farm we made the last episode. Thank you for watching, by the way. Get a little bit of XP on our way down. We built a floating starter house right here that actually covers up the bubble column that takes us down all the way over to Bedrock. Let's float on down over here. We have a hallway that takes us all the way over to the laboratory where all the skeletons fall and turn all of the stone into Skulk. Come on over here to the throne where we can gather all of our stone in this generator right here. And I know we could probably use a beacon to make it more efficient, but we haven't got a beacon down here just quite yet. But we have a nice place to sit down here in AFK. The skeleton spawner is actually right above us and it sends everybody over right here. Sometimes they actually have feather falling, so we have to swipe at them. But if you have a silk touch hoe, you can acquire all of the skulk that you could possibly need and then just replace it up with the stone here. I love watching it turn into skulk. And this actually turned into a little bit of a bone meal farm. If we put the skulk away, let's head down the ladder real quick and go under. We have a bunch of bones and more arrows, too. I kind of want to see what all the arrow types are like. I think I'm going to dedicate an episode later in this series to an arrow shop. Let's hop in the minecart all the way back to the bubble column. 
and head back up to sea level where it's nighttime. Let's go back in and take a nap. Wake up in the morning feeling good and wasting rockets, looking at the sun. This is going to be a good day. I do want to show you guys the progress, actually, on the auto-sorting system. I had mentioned recently that we are going to move it about 200 blocks to the east. Rocket on over instead of using the mine carts. That's a little dangerous, but uh, we're going to remove this beacon right here. We have a giant tunnel that we had excavated on stream. By the way, it is twitch.tv slash waxfraud. Feel free to join anytime. We do stream every single day. But if we go over here, there is a brand new cave that we had reached, and this is actually right under Rainbow Mountain. This thing is huge, and it actually saves me a lot of time from excavation. I can hear creepers falling. This is not good. But yeah, this thing is enormous. There are creepers everywhere, so I definitely need to be careful. Let's probably not push our luck. We could actually spend a little bit of time torching some of this place up. That way, next time we come back, we don't have to worry too much about creepers. Oh, hey, there's a basalt right there. I don't want to push our luck. There's skeletons closing in on me, so... Oh, yep, exactly. Let's get back up here. But anyways, this is going to be the new location of the auto-sorting system. Now, let's head through the tunnel. We're going to go back to that ancient city. We're going to have to make a villager breeder, so let's grab a couple of beds. We're going to need... Actually, I have some grass with me. Let's grab some carrots. Get a few villagers to toss these guys around. Let's grab a few composters, and I think the villagers are pretty much ready to go. Let's go pick two chosen ones to get our village started in the ancient city. Just wasting rockets by accident. And as you can see, there is a small amount of decoration that has taken place. We're slowly but surely getting this place put together. As time goes on, you'll notice this place start to look a little bit more exquisite. I have a boat right here I'll grab. This one can't fit me on it. I think, oh, that one can't either. I know we have Clarique back here talking to a librarian. And he's already a master trader, so we're not going to take you. But we are going to take this librarian and we're going to turn him into a farmer. Sir, you're coming with me getting the boat? Thank you very much. I'm going to move you very slowly over this way. You're going to hop in the boat right there. Thank you. Let's go inch this way a little bit. After a little bit of struggle, we finally made it. Okay, let's go. Now we can zoom all the way down the hallway. Let's take this guy out. We're going to have to push him through. Wait, oh, you know what I should have done is actually grabbed a couple of fence gates because he's going to want to leave. Get back on the boat, dude. All right, you stay there just one second. Coming back with guy number two, and oh, oh, we're stopping right there. We can put some fences right here so that the villagers have zero way of getting across. But uh, I will take out your boat here, take out your boat here, and you guys are now stuck. The quarters have gotten a little bit closer. I need to, I'm gonna actually have to probably push these guys through. The other guy, I think, walked in when I was turned around, but this guy looks like he wants to just be pushed into the nether portal. Get in there, buddy. You're almost there, almost there, and he's in. Let's see. I hope they're not open. No, no, no. Well, this is not where I really wanted them to go. Let's hopefully, uh, don't fall down here. One of them is already stuck right here. Are you gonna get in there too? Don't do this. Don't do this to me. In a matter of 10 seconds, one of these guys is stuck, and one of them is just hanging out on the house. Let's take this down here. You guys can get down. I'm gonna take this down too. No possible way of you guys getting there again. Let's, uh, take this out so that you guys can just get back in the house, please. One of them just went back through. I'm going to have to grab him real quick. Sir, what are you doing? Where are you at? Okay, you don't need to be here. I'm going to push you right back through. You don't... I don't know why you even went this way. Sir, you're being very difficult. There we go. I'm going to get the boat over here. These guys are being very difficult. Hold up. Where are you at? I'm going to get you guys in the boats. All right, guys, we cannot take the same boat. Hold up. We're going to do one at a time here. I'm going to get you in a boat right here, sir, and then I'm going to get in. We are so close to falling. We're right here on the edge, and let's go down. Let's be as safe as we can, and we're here. Ooh, I think this guy actually might be running right over to the opening of the staircase. Oh, this is perfect. Dude, I love this. Okay, so this was actually a little bit easier than I thought it would be. Let's get you into the boat so you don't leave. Okay, why are you not getting into the boat, sir? Sir, I just need to push you over here for it. Thank you very much. Just stay there and uh, stop breaking stuff. Villager number two is still up here. Let's do our best not to land in the water. Oh, let's be careful. And let's go this way. And there we go. We are doing great. Let's swim a little bit over here on the deep slate. And uh, let's meet our friend. Luckily, I brought a bell down here already. So these villagers, I bet they will just auto... Okay, never mind. I thought he was going to go that way. Get, sir, get in the boat. So if we're going to reach the goal of the episode and transform this entire ancient city, what we got to do is find a nice place for the villager breeder. And I think this little square area right in the middle is actually perfect. Let's take out these deep slate blocks and meticulously replace them all with some grass blocks. We'll move the villagers in here and we'll get them breeding. And one Twitch stream later, we have these guys cooped up over on the side of a brand new villager breeder. We have a bunch of carrots that are growing right here right now. 
We have a nice wooden interior on the inside of the ceiling, and then on the outside, we're actually using a lot of mangrove and a lot of quartz pillars for the roof, as well as a little bit of a mixture of oak, jungle, and spruce up here for some windows. This was a really fun stream, though, because now we can actually take a step back and look at what the builds are going to start looking like in the deep dark down here. Like, this thing is just popping out. Everything else is so desolate, it's either Deep Slate, Gravel, or Skulk, and now we finally have a brand new building down here, and you know what, let's get these guys loose. I'm gonna break your boat, and I'm gonna break your boat, and you guys are just gonna become some farmers, I'm gonna get in here with you. They don't wanna do it, let's, uh, let's break this, let's put that right there, and come on guys, there we go, get in there. These guys are now in, they just need to take their composting jobs right here. We can actually take this warden statue out because uh, this thing used to resemble a warden head. We left it in for just a little bit because I actually wanted to remake it out of quartz on the front side right here. We'll go down. This is where the baby villagers are going to drop into. Come back around and we have an even bigger warden head on the front now. Got to put some flowers in here, I almost forgot to, so that at least they can have something nice to look at when they enter the world. And they're both farmers. Alright, you take some carrots, you take some carrots. Let's get to breeding, buddies. There's like 10 beds right below you guys, so this shouldn't really be an issue. It is possible these guys need a bell. The one all the way over here is a little bit too far away, possibly, so let's just put one right up here, and maybe that one's a lot closer. A cake down here and some carpet for the baby villagers to fall on, so they should be good to go. I hear them trading care- Okay, I see it happening. Let's go. Baby villager time. Thought I heard these guys trading some carrots, but uh, they didn't do anything yet, so I have an idea. While we're waiting, let's uh, let's replace all of the floor with a little bit of moss and maybe some grass here and there, but mostly moss because it's super, super easy to spread. Look at this, it just spreads everywhere. We can keep on taking all the skulk out with our silk touch hoe here, but uh, for the most part, this moss is only going to be affecting the natural blocks like the tuff and the deep slate. These cobbled deep slate structures as well as these other deep slate structures like this hallway, these are also not going to be affected. Okay, this is already making the side of the building look way nicer. Okay, bone mealing, and there are shriekers here. This is not good. Let's creep over here. There's some wool over here, so I've obviously been here already, and there's multiple shriekers. Let's, uh, let's cover these guys up. Get this shrieker and sensor completely covered up here, and we'll just take you out. Then we can take the second one out, and we're good to go. And we get a new chest filled with a bunch of bones, books, bottles of enchanting, and some soul torches. It's kind of cool that they give you a really nice fortune 3 diamond hoe also. Well, if these shriekers were here, that means there's probably going to be some more shriekers. I actually see a skulk catalyst right behind me. Okay, I see one shrieker, and I see two shriekers again. Let's, uh, let's see if we can take these guys out. Okay, well, there's actually some more loot up here, but I'm seeing one, two, and three and four shriekers. So we, okay, this is, uh, this is a little dangerous. So I think this guy's covered up enough. Let's take you, let's take you. Okay, well, that was bad. Not a good idea. Let's hop down here. I, for some reason, thought I covered that one up, and it's gonna shriek again. Please don't shriek again. Well, guys, uh, that's, that's our third strike. We really gotta be careful, dude. I think we're in the clear. I can see the villager breeder out there. I think we actually explored pretty much everything. That might be the last two shriekers. So, let's hop down here on the wool. Let's see what's in the chest, and... Ooh, not bad. And in the other one, we got ourselves another cat disc. But most importantly, we got ourselves a skeleton skull right here. Alright, not good. All of my wool is burning. Let's, uh, let's break this so it doesn't spread. Get out of here. Please get- does the skulk burn? Oh god, the skulk is burning too. Wait, stop. Oh, now I'm burning. Well, I should have seen that coming. I was just so worried about the shriekers, I completely forgot that wool burns in lava. Now I feel like with all of the shriekers, or I guess most of the shriekers, there might be a couple hidden ones, but I feel like with most of them gone, we can probably start moving some of the farm animals down here. I gotta get some chickens, we gotta get some cows, some pigs. I forgot we're in the mesa, so when the grass forms over this moss, it's kind of yellow. It does add a little bit of extra color down here. It's kind of nice. That way not everything down here is one shade of green. I think as we get closer to the door, we can start to think about, you know what? Yeah, let's bring some of these animals down here before we start bone mealing literally everywhere in this place. I think first things first, let's go back and actually just get some chicken eggs so we can move some chickens here. This is going to give me the opportunity to show you guys the brand new updated interior of the nether hub that we worked on on a recent YouTube stream. And thank you guys for showing up to that if you did, I appreciate y'all. But on this we have deep slate tile walls, diorite, and a combination of the wart stem and the crimson stem so that we can differentiate between the entrances. We have a lot of builds out here now and we have a lot of destinations to get to via the nether hub so it's going to be nice to be able to tell where exactly we're going. I'm also just stoked at the fact we have something nice to look at while we're in the nether hub. Fly over to the chicken coop real fast and grab a couple of stacks of eggs. Thank you very much, I appreciate that guys, you keep doing you buddy. 
It's kind of strange to see these guys here. I oftentimes replace them because the ocelots spawn in this jungle biome right inside of the chicken coop and take them all out, but uh, these guys are still going. I really hope I'm not throwing the chickens down here prematurely. This could be a huge mistake because uh, they could just be setting off some shriekers at a later time, but let's actually, you know, or we could just set them in the staircase and then let them out after we want to. I'm loving this. We're going to use this as a temporary chicken coop on the staircase here, and uh, we're going to double check. As we're going around, getting the moss all bone mealed up, we're going to make sure that there's no more streakers. Get all the skulk out over here as well. It's starting to get dark back here. In order to make everything even, I've actually just been replacing the skulk with some grass. That way it actually looks pretty smooth alongside this moss up here. And that way when we bone meal the moss, it doesn't start going down on this other level. More bone meal here, more bone meal here. Thank you very much. I do want to place torches on the moss, but I am going to have to water bucket it, so let's actually just let's do that first, and then we'll get some torches down, because this place is starting to get pretty dark here. We'll place you right there, and you right there. More skulk. The skulk will be mine. I'm really enjoying this half grass and half moss blend down here. Little deep slate pockets. We'll just hit them with this moss real quick, like that, and that one's almost gone. We're good to go. This place is starting to get completely covered up. We have about maybe 80% done. Ouch. Let's go this way here. Yeah, I'd say about 80% done. We haven't got this all the way back here. Oh, there's a catalyst all the way up there. Run over and grab that real quick. I guess that makes sense as to why I didn't place any torches up here yet. We have been down here for a couple of hours now, almost to the end of this hallway right here. We're so close. We are out of bone meal. Let's fly back and actually let's check on that villager breeder and see what's up. I see a third villager in here. We have one, two, and three, but that means that the baby villager did not fall through here. No big deal. We'll break in through the side. Let's go in here. I'm going to break this trap door right here and me. Okay, hold on. He's right here. Let's get you pushed down. The one guy that's not a... Yes, perfect. Close that back up and I... Th oh, we have an iron golem. That's awesome. I think that officially means we've started a village down here. Let's go. Whoa, I turned around and there's another one right here. What's happening? These guys are spawning really quick. I really hope we got all the Shriekers out of here. Let's open this gate and let this guy out. And we now have our first free roaming villager. Actually, what I'm thinking is we could probably take out this fence gate altogether. This guy's exploring everything already. It's looking good back here, huh? I don't really have any work blocks for the villagers yet. So yeah, all right. So he'll be the Mason. I'm going to trade with this guy real quick to lock him in. Thank you very much, sir. And I'm noticing that I picked up some beetroot seeds, which is kind of strange, because I only planted carrots down here, now there's beetroots. Why must you replace my carrots? All the extra stuff that we've been collecting, we have a lot of skulk in here, but we've just been putting it into the shulker boxes so far. And in this shulker box right here, we have all of the villager professions that are possibly able to come down here. There's 13 of them total, and I'm just going to place them right here so that the villagers, when they come out, they have something to do immediately. I thought I just heard another baby villager, and he's right here. So right now I'm actually thinking the transformation of the entire ancient city is an enormous task and it's going to take us a long time. So first things first, I think what we need to do is set another goal and that is to just create a whole village down here first before we start revamping everything else. Because there is a lot of room down here. There's even room for more villages than just this one. Iron golems have made themselves at home right here, but I think I'm going to turn this into a mason hall. While we're waiting on these guys to breed up more villagers, we can always make the builds look nice. Let's hop over here out of the way of the iron golems, and let's get some oak logs this time for the frame. Once the frame is done, we'll strip all the wood up here. Let's take down these cobbled deep slate walls real quick. I kind of want to get them replaced with some quartz. I have quartz pillars and smooth quartz. But actually, wait, let's use the quartz bricks instead. These are going to look nice. Not too bad. I think quartz bricks it is. Let's use some stone up here for a basic roof structure. Let's get some more stairs over here, and I actually physically can't right now because of the skulk above me. Let's actually just take this. I don't have my hoe with me right now, so let's just take this out. In fact, this whole pillar right here just doesn't belong, and I feel like it has to go. Getting this bottom part bone mealed up is actually going to be no problem. But this top part up here, this part definitely needs some skulk taken out. This pillar's been taken out. We have a nice open space. We do have a little bit more deep slate up here that we still need to take out as well. A lot of this is just hanging right over the villager breeder, not so much over the mason trading hall anymore. Now that I'm up here though, I am realizing I did not put any flowers on the roof. Let's fly down. I actually have some torch flowers with me. Get a torch flower next to here. We're using rooted dirt for the roof. I've actually never done that before, but it's nice to get to use new blocks for the roof. Not looking too shabby. I'm really liking this build. And actually, while we were working on the exterior here, let's get these plants up. The villager breeder was going crazy. I think we have all 13 villager jobs taken up now. Got the stone cutter. Let's see. Let's just put it right in the middle of the room. 
small amount of interior decorating never hurt nobody we got to get a little bit of light a little bit of spruce in here i think six lanterns in here should do and we're all lit up some nice flowers on the side what is this guy doing all the way down here sir why are you over here in this watchtower must have climbed right up this ladder. Sir, what are you doing up here? I'm actually liking this tower a lot. We could just build right onto this and bring a job lock up there for him. Iron Golem seem to be checking out the tunnels. We gotta change these tunnels up too. And I see a cat. Come here, buddy. Be my friend, please. I'm just gonna run after you until you become my friend. Eat the salmon. Yeah. Okay, perfect. We have one cat down here. Fly back over the tower. I think I'm gonna make this guy my Fletcher. And boom, you are now the Fletcher. I like how we have a designated spot for this guy up here now. I feel like we should just start designating some more spots for the other jobs. Take the cauldron and move it over by this cat right here so that the leather workers can have this little tower. I'm going to take the smoker and put it in the middle of this field. We'll get the butcher a nice little starter house over here. I'm going to put the lectern right over here so we can dedicate this tower to the librarians. With about half of the job blocks with a designated position, I think this town is actually starting to take a little bit more shape. The one thing that is separating the entrance from this little village, though, is this deep slate tunnel. They're all filled up with these various deep slate blocks and a lot of this gray wool that we're going to have to take out and replace. For the most part, these deep slate pillars, I'm just going to start replacing them with the spruce logs and get the rest of this replaced with some stone. It already has so much more life with just the spruce logs alone. And actually, I just heard a cat. Ooh, there's the cat. Where's my salmon? Right here. Please get away from the lava, dude. Why do you, you got to do this? Dude, just get away from the lava. Stop freaking out. Eat the salmon. I'm going to go around here. Maybe away from the lava is a little bit of a better way. Hey, eat the salmon, buddy. Eat the... Yeah! We now have two cats down here. Working with stone in the ancient city is actually kind of nice. It looks like it adds a lot of depth to all the builds. Cracked deep slate bricks look so cool. I like these a lot. I'm going to start using these a little bit more. I'm going to get them replaced for now, though, with some chiseled stone bricks. I don't think I'm ever going to have to mine for deep slate ever again after this. I was trying out different colored carpet on the floor. I don't think it's going to work, though. I really do think that the oak wood is going to be the only way to do it. It's going to make the stone pop. It's going to make the spruce wood pop, too. And adding some brick along the sides is really going to make these colors pop as well. Get some andesite under those. Get some spruce stairs on the bottom of each of the logs. We'll use some end rods down by the ground. And do I have lanterns on me? I do. We'll use some lanterns up top hanging from the bricks. Go around the corner, we'll place some end rods on the back side, and by the way, we are the proud owner of three cats down in the deep dark biome now. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. While I'm looking up, it's got me thinking, I kind of want to leave the skulk on the ceiling, it does have a nice starry night effect up there. The middle part of the tunnel here used to be separated by a giant solid line of deep slate, but not any longer, I think we're just going to actually cover it up by some glass so we can see on both sides. We're going to give these tunnels a more open concept. Get some lanterns every now and then in here for just a little bit more light. The stairway over here that's next to the entrance, I actually need to complete this little overhang right here to connect these brick stairs. These things make so much noise. Now for some minor decorations up top, let's get some andesite walls on these chiseled blocks. The second level wasn't really getting used for anything, so I think maybe some awnings up here would be cool too. I'm getting very much burnt right now. Let's get the pain and the noise out of here. This is looking a lot more official already. Let's get some lanterns up here on every other one. The entire time I've been down here, I've just been thinking, I am so happy that nothing is able to spawn down here. It's making the building process so much easier. Ooh, the tunnels are looking good now. Okay, so I feel like we need to get some paths going in between the tunnels and these houses. Now that we have two houses on this side and we have a brand new house over here that we did on a brand new YouTube stream. We got more iron golems popping up on this side and more in the tunnels. But this right here is a basic starter house design I've been putting in my worlds. It has everything that the villagers need to get started. Oh, there's actually one sleeping in here right now. As the villager breeding continues, there's probably going to be more and more that need jobs. So I'm going to start making some random houses on the side as well. This guy's stuck, but sir, you got to get yourself unstuck. I can't do it for you. As you can see, we did start with a little bit of the cobblestone slabs, but uh, we're going to make this a lot bigger. Let's go ahead and replace all of this moss with some grass. If we had dirt, we could use dirt, but uh, the grass will have to do for now. We can actually just change this into the pathways, and then anything that we don't want to be a pathway, I'm going to turn into some oak slabs or some spruce slabs. Then we'll have to repeat that process over by these houses and get everything else connected. Don't worry, guys, you will have roads soon enough. And slab up the pathways back here. We have the Fletcher Tower now all nice and cozy. Don't really have a good way of getting up there yet, so we can run around the back of the place that I haven't really worked into the village yet. In due time, the ancient city will be completely transformed, but uh, getting all the way over here has taken a lot more time than I thought it would. This is my first time using mangrove trapdoors as a wall, and I'm going to do this a lot more now. I'm really loving that. Let's say what up to Fletch real quick. What's going on, dude? 
This is now a fully operational watchtower, so you need to keep us safe, buddy. That's your only job. Let's hop over to this tower here and complete the stairs around the glowstone tower. Transforming this guy shouldn't be too bad. Let's take out the rest of this skulk, and I think this deep slate we're going to replace with some stone bricks. Also, some spruce log towers for the structuring should work. All right, and so instead of the stone, we actually use the diorite pillars, and we use the quartz pillars right outside of the spruce. I think these colors coordinate just a little bit better. The stone was clashing a little bit, so I decided to go with the white of the diorite. I think it goes a lot better with the smooth white color of these quartz pillars. Some spruce fence gates in here never hurt nobody. We'll get some up top. Get some amethyst clusters on the outside for some color. It's been really nice actually searching for blocks to use that are not deep slate. It's making the builds look a little bit more unique down here. We'll go ahead and put some cherry leaves on the top floor. Also, just one more layer of these quartz slabs to take out. Also, it looks like I forgot to replace some of this deep slate right here. Get these quartz bricks replaced here. And actually, at the very top, it is a little bit dim. Get the diorite walls hooked up and a little bit of end rod action at the very top just so we can have a little bit of light. Drop down to the bottom. We can get some cherry leaves up here. Boom and bop. And of course, we can't forget the wall to fence to chain to end rod action on the bottom. Let's get all these stairs out of the way here and get them replaced with the quartz stairs. We're gonna use some cherry trap doors as a means of walls. The towers are not looking too bad. I think it's missing a little bit of light up by the top cherry leaves though. The librarian villager is up here making himself at home somewhere. He has a bed, he has his little lectern. Kind of a difficult angle to reach. Let's get from this side and actually I like that a lot. Everything's starting to come together. We have four houses. We have the tunnels built up. We have this little watchtower over here. We have two quartz towers. These pillars right here are standing out as the next thing that I think I need to replace. I like the pattern here. We just have regular deep slate, deep slate tile stairs, the chiseled deep slate blocks, and the polished deep slate. I feel like we could go with a similar pattern, but with completely different blocks. Let's start taking these out one by one. This one will start off a little bit easier. We'll use all the stone brick variants. Or maybe brick towers would look a lot better. Actually, I lied. The quartz is the best replacement. We have the chiseled blocks, the bricks going up into the stairs, into the regular quartz blocks, and the pillars. All of them combined, they do make a great replacement. And if we walk back here on the chiseled stone blocks and the oak bridges, we can see all of the other ones. These are actually a nice city wall of some sorts for the current version of what the town is. Actually, ooh, there's a missing lantern all the way back here. Guys, I'm telling you right now, you can never have too many lanterns. This pillar in particular was a little weird though because it backs up right into this tunnel and actually, oh, hold up, I did not finish this. Let's get some glass in here too. Boom, 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 boom. Now that's done. What's up, dude? How you doing in there? Iron golems are actually making their way all the way back in between the pillars. And while we're in the tunnel, I believe there's some more ferns. Yep, right here that we did not place. The ferns are always going to make the tunnels look a little bit more nice. And while we're down here, we can show you the nice cat collection that we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cats already. This is crazy. These cats are eagerly waiting for me to finish this pond that I said I was going to start. I put a nice little barrier around where I think a pond should go, and all of the water for the pond is going to be sourced from this natural little waterfall. I'm actually going to put a torch up here just in case I end up wanting to make this look a little nicer. This waterfall gives you a great vantage point of the town currently, though. I think, yeah, this pond is the one thing that's missing. There's just this giant empty field right here. Normally all my ponds have stone and dirt at the bottom, but I think it would actually be really interesting if we left it all moss. For instance, if we took all of this deep slate out right here and then just went down a level with the moss and then went down another level right here, put even more moss on the third level, maybe a fourth level, this could look really nice and cozy. Luckily I brought two water buckets so I can start myself a little water source. Glad we brought this shulker down. It's filled up with all the coral, all of the bone meal and pickles that we're gonna need to get this thing finished. Big on moss, we must make a pond. A little bit of amethyst down here, but mostly coral down here on the floor. Just a little bit of lily pad action on the top, and we'll slap some sea pickles down on the bottom. And just like that, with one YouTube stream later, we have a brand new pond. This thing is looking great. Nice and cozy. We have our mangrove boat, our little raft over there. On the outside here, we're going to have the cattails hanging on the corners with some cherry leaves and some cherry bushes. If we hop across the lily pads, we can take a look at the well that's sourcing the water right from the pond. And if we hop back over to the other side, we can see the water tower that, and I'm stuck, hold on, we can see the water tower that actually holds more of the water for the rest of the town, and the cauldron down here for the leather worker. As we started digging along the ceiling, I noticed the walls were getting a little dark, so we spammed glow berries pretty much everywhere so that the corners could start to look a little bit more brighter. Speaking of making things brighter, let's, uh, let's add some jack-o'-lanterns around town. 
We'll get one in between the tunnel system and the starter house. Actually, you know what? We'll get a few of them. We'll go one over here, and we'll put one over here as well. Slap one on the corner, and you know what? We could actually slap one right here and right here. I think I just stole the fern from that clay pot. I'm not sure why I did that. Right here is obviously the corner of the town. There is a tunnel system that's still made out of deep slate. I'm just lighting it up very slowly. I hear a baby villager behind me that may have made himself right at- What's up, dude? Made himself right at home in the brand new beacon tower house. But I'm gonna start using a lot more natural lighting systems back here just so that we can start making it a little bit easier to expand. Dude, there are baby villagers all over. There, there's like three in the back of the village over here. They're trying to tell me where to put these jack-o'-lanterns. Okay, buds, I'll get one right back here too. Another classic way of lighting up the town is obviously the red mushroom lamp. We gotta get a lot of these in here. Other than the jack-o'-lantern sea pickle mixture, these are my favorite lighting source in the game. And we are coating this corner with more lighting. We were using a bunch of torches, but these mushrooms look a lot better, so I'm gonna keep using them. Slap one more up right about here to light that little area up, and I have one more bell that I want to bring in for a third one. Maybe just one more village will get about 10 to 15 more villagers down here. They're all very spread out now that I have beds all over the place. They're upstairs, downstairs, all over in the houses. So I have some bread in here, right here actually. And let's just start throwing these right on top of them. Sir, you don't even look comfy. You're not, you're technically not even in the bed here. How about just take some bread? You take some bread. Oh, wow. Everybody just woke up. That was weird. And uh, you over here, sir, that's trying to walk away right now. You take some bread. And uh, you two up here on the bear. Actually, they're just, walk everybody's over. Everybody over here, just take some bread. Well, that was really fast. That's kind of insane. We have beds all over. You know what? Everybody just keep taking the bread right here, right now. These baby villagers are popping out quick, man. Quick, sir. Take the bread. You look hungry. Looking at the village from this corner over here is absolutely insane. We've been digging out just a little bit of the wall. We had a lot of cobblestone up here because the lava and the water met on a long play that we made. But now we have plenty of space to be able to perch up here and look at the village from up top. We have a lot of these tall flowers around the pond down there, but uh, not around the houses and towers that we had built and refurbished. So let's actually move away from this pond real quick. The pond for the most part is done, except for maybe a rose bush right here and a lilac right there. But uh, I think we uh, just need to go in between these houses and start spamming some tall flowers. Pitcher plants everywhere, never hurt nobody. There's four baby villagers right here. What is going on? Okay, this village is just turning into a daycare down here. Lilac's back here, and it looks like even more baby pillagers. Let's go! For now, a lot of these tall flowers do look great, but the two most colorful and my favorite of the small flowers are going to be these torch flowers and then the blue orchids, so let's start spamming these around everywhere too. I think the cats are going to like some more blue orchids back here. We got all the flowers, all the mushrooms, a lot of the jack-o'-lanterns in, and it's looking very colorful, especially with the glowberries in the background and these twisted vines going all the way up. But something else that can go vertical, and it's in my hand right now, are some bamboo. And actually, let's just get this going up just a little bit. We'll start spamming some bamboo down here as well. While we're waiting for the bamboo to grow, I do have some stones that I just kind of want to place around town. We can place them on the grass. We can place them on the stone blocks on the pathway too. It's always about the minor details. Hold up, can't forget to put a puffer fish in here. My bad, dude. Very disrespectful of me to forget about the puffer fish. Let's go ahead and get some of these amethyst clusters here on the ground right next to all of these stones. Well, all these guys are stuck. This is kind of weird, so let's just break this trapdoor and all of these. Maybe they'll just jump down. Okay, you know what? We can't have nice things here. Let's just... And this guy's stuck again. Let's break all, all of these trapdoors on the first floor. Just need to go. Apparently, these guys can't handle any trapdoors. Still looks good, though, and I guess if it makes the villagers happy, then I'm happy. Now, other than just getting some trees on the ground, I feel like we just gotta get some random melons here and there. I'm gonna get some note blocks here and there as well, just for some decorations. We'll put some stone cutters here and there on top of them. Get some grindstones around town, and we'll just put some candles right on top of those. This episode has been so hectic, I usually just do one structure per episode, but this episode has been an entire village taking up way more time than I originally thought it would. More villagers, oh my god, it's a party over here. What's going on? Okay, we have a lot of foliage done. We'll get the trees in in a little bit, but first I feel like since we have all these baby villagers, it's only right to get all of the other animals in. Let's go see if those chickens are on the other side of the gate. All right, buds, gather around, follow me downstairs. Follow me, please, before any villagers decide to come in here. And you're good. Let's close those up. Okay, we officially have chickens that are about to just start roaming right now. Not gonna hold any seeds. These guys are just gonna go roam around looking for some more. And you know what? Let's just throw some eggs around town. 
Actually, wait, I see some skulk all the way up there that I didn't even take out. Let's head up there real quick. Looks like there's this section right here and a whole other section behind me. This actually shows you where the roof used to be. It used to lie right down here, but we raised it up about five blocks. I'm glad I actually went up here because I'm noticing that there's some birch buttons that I forgot to put on that roof. Let's get all the skulk off the sidewalk. Grab the skulk from this roof, place the birch buttons down. I can't believe I almost forgot these. The last two right here. Okay, let's go up. Let's get some sheep, some pigs, and some cows down in here. Some of these guys are chilling right at the nether hub. Actually, we have some cows. There we are. What's up, cows? How you doing? Get over here. Actually, I have some wheat. You guys come with me this way. Slowly but surely, we will make it to your new home. Approaching the portal, and oh yeah, we are right here. Okay, come on, guys. Just a little bit further. You guys come in this way. Actually, let's just push you first. One sheep went through, and that's the last one. Okay, perfect. Okay, single file, please. Let's move the door. Follow me, guys. Come on. All right, first guy right here. I'm gonna get you in the boat, and then we are gonna head right down into the pond. Should be no problem landing right about here. This is absolutely perfect. Why, why does everything have to get on top of the house? Hold up, I'm gonna break these so you guys can't be here physically anymore. We have our next victim. Let's fly all the way down. Maybe we can land on the path. Oh, yes, we can. We have our first sheep, we have our second sheep, and we now have our third sheep right here once they make a baby. You can have some wheat, guy. There you go. Cow number one. We're about to fly down. Oh, yeah. Put the bamboo door back up, and we will now be able to take cow number two down. And away we go! No, what? How did that happen? I swear I did not know that you could do that. This guy down, and you down. There you go, sir. Are you kidding me, dude? That was the- that- how did the cow just die falling from there? That's like three blocks. Both cows just died. I do promise none of that was on purpose. I don't know how that happened. You know what? What we're gonna do, let's go back home and let's bring a puppy down here because puppies aren't gonna disappear on us. Let's head over to Puppy Island and pick one of these brave souls to come down to the ancient city with us. You right here, sir, you're looking great. I actually have the perfect name for you. So this pup's name is The Man, and actually he's gonna have a cyan collar. Looking good, dude. Let's see if I fly all the way over here. Will The Man follow me over? He will. Let's go. Come with me, dude. You can teleport all you want, but just stay in the glass walls. I'm in the raft with The Man, and I'm not gonna land on that well again. I'm gonna try my best to just land in this pond, and then... Okay, we're good. That is perfect. Couple lily pads broken, no harm done break the raft and we now have a puppy let's go ahead and get him on to dry land and you know what dude you should sit right here in between these two pressure plates right on top of this frog light get right in the middle and there you go front and center you guys i really do want to thank you for watching this episode this took a lot longer to build than i thought it was going to there's at least like 20 to 30 villagers down here. We have like 50 chickens. We have pigs. We have sheep. We gotta get those cows back down here. We're not gonna talk about what happened to the first cows. We have a beautiful pond down here with a bunch of tropical fish, some cod. We have a nice pupper fish in here now. Chickens are even loving the pond over here. They're polluting the pool with their eggs. Iron golems are in here taking a bath. We have a nice, lush, lively village down here. Only thing left to do is to spruce up the rest of the ancient city, which happens to be probably about me uh, like 70% of the rest of the structures. Look at all this back here. This is all, oh, these are all sensors actually. A jump up and down. Yep, these are all sensors and that's a catalyst right there. There's a bunch of lava above me. Well, this, this part's gonna be fun. We're saving all this for the next episode, though. This giant portal right here has got to get revamped. All of this area out here still has to be revamped. The entire transformation of the rest of the ancient city is going to be next episode. But for now, it was really nice to work on getting the initial village here. Hi, everybody. Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. We are jumping through the ancient city village that we had just built on the last episode, and thanks for watching if you guys did. The goal of today's episode is to make a giant redstone-operated dance floor for all of these villagers down here. We'll be primarily using skulk sensors and axolotls with some observers hooked up to some redstone lamps. This place is enormous. We have about a dozen buildings here. We have some starter houses, some starter towers over here where the villagers can come up and start their jobs. This guy's taking a nice nap, enjoying the view of what will be something very cool out here. We got sheep taken home in these long hallways stretching all the way through. Oh, this, is this guy stuck? Hold on, hold on. Where are you at? And get, there you go, buddy. 
Why are these guys always getting stuck on azalea bushes? In the last episode, uh, two of the cows did not make it all the way to the bottom here, so we are going to retry. I had some chickens, I guess, take my spot in the boat. Sorry, buddy, you're gonna have to move. I'm taking this spot in the boat, and we are gonna go down. I really hope that this cow makes it. All right, fingers crossed, and we are good to go. Okay, we're good to go. Bring the boat slightly over here. I think I just broke a lily pad. Chickens are getting caught in this boat already. You gotta go, dude. Please stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Let's go back up and get that other cow real quick. Sorry about this chicken. You're gonna have to go too. And cow, let's go down real quick and you are gonna survive. I really hope we make it. That fall was so gentle. That was the exact opposite of what happened last episode. Hanging out with the man here and I realized I did forget some pigs last episode. So we're gonna have to get these guys too. Luckily on stream, I kind of already brought them all the way over here. I just need to bring them down safely and I really hope we can make it. The sheep got down there just fine last episode, but the cows did not make it, and so I'm kind of traumatized. But this pig right here made it just fine, so I guess let's fly back up, grab the other guy. And of course, another chicken in the boat. I'm sorry, guys. You just keep taking my spot, and oh, hold up. I just I didn't have to kill the chicken. All right, that's awesome. Pig, get back in the boat, and me and you can go back down. <laughs> Sometimes violence doesn't have to be the only way. All right, let's get this pig down here safe and sound. No! Oh my god! Pig was just reduced to pork chops. Oh my god, this cow over here landed on a glass pole. These guys, I guess, landed in the water, but I've landed some of the other animals over on the land here, and they were just fine. <laughs> there is just too much unnecessary violence right now. Well, let's get these guys out of the boats here. I will take that. You can roam free, and this cow can roam free. I really don't want to hit you, buddy. There you go. And let's see if I can get these guys out of here without hurting either of them. I really don't want to hit them because there's too many iron golems around here. There we go. There's at least 20 iron golems down here. There's a whole family of them. And actually, I'm just realizing that there's two plants down here that I had never planted. I believe I have some stuff with me. Actually, you know what? I have one dark oak sapling and one acacia sapling. That's perfect. To make up for the lost pig, I think we need a baby cow. And baby cow we have. Put these lily pads back that we had broken. And you know what? Let's save this chicken to balance out life a little bit. He deserves... Okay, never mind. He doesn't want to be saved. I am noticing here against this wall, is this two or three villagers bad? Why are you guys stuck? Why do you, why do you guys get stuck on the azalea leaves? And what is this guy doing on the waterfall over here? Alright, hold on, buddy. Let's get you saved. Level three rockets are a little too powerful in here. Okay, this waterfall seems to have you a little bit stuck. Let's uh, maybe just push you over on that side. And there you go, buddy. Just a little bit of a push. Actually, now that we're over here, I can show you guys all of the storage here. Over here is just a bunch of barrels that I've been using to get all of the skulk. We've been excavating a bunch of skulk and a bunch of deep slate. All the skulk goes over here. The remaining shriekers, sensors, and catalysts that we had found down here um, after the initial excavation is all going in that chest. And if you go up here, we have a brand new storage system for all of the deep slate that we catch. We have boom, boom, boom. We have too much. Also, don't mind the 50 shulker boxes that we have down here. There, We have way too many. Villagers are taking naps absolutely everywhere. The chickens are everywhere. And now we have a nice and cozy area to store everything. We were getting a bunch of moss items too, so I figured it would be cool to gather everything and, you know, just make a little bit of extra bone meal while we we're down here. I also like how this storage system kind of just overlooks everything, at least as far as you can see with all the glow berries hanging everywhere. And from here, you can easily get into town from the center of town right through here where the man is chilling, or you can actually go down the side that I've recently decorated. We have the quartz towers all the way over here. These things are magnificent. I really like how bright they make the side over here. The one thing that I need to do is actually get the center over here. This is kind of like a train terminal. I'm not, or like a train station. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to build here yet. That's why I've left it a little bit empty. But on each side, we do have these quartz pillars all the way done. There's still so much to do, but in the next episode after this, what we're going to focus on is re-transforming this entire ancient city portal right here. This thing is huge, and I feel like if we replaced it with a bunch of quartz, it could look even more magnificent. Also, I really hope that these reinforced deep slate blocks one day become a little bit useful. I like that we made our way over here, though, because these light sensors are actually what inspired a little bit of this episode. Also, we had a Valentine's Day subserver event this year, and feel free to join the subserver if you'd like to. We do have a Christmas event coming up, so if you want to join, feel free. The link is in the Discord. But I did take inspiration from those builds in the subserver as well. I think the villager breeder over here is going strong, but I'm just going to help it out by throwing chickens on the ground basically everywhere all over town. Your town can never have too many chickens. I guess we can also speed up the breeding process by throwing some bread around at these fellas. Hey, you over there, take some bread, sir. Thank you very much. You over here, you take some bread, sir. Thank you very much. 
Okay, they're breeding from what is happening here? I thought I closed this off guys We need to open this trap door right here. Let everybody out. Okay, there's too many people in here Okay, so they were just coming up and breeding through the trap door I thought that I had stopped them from getting in and out you can take some bread too, sir Eat your bread buddy or you don't get any cake there you go. Oh, I see. So I think I did this wrong. So if I take this trap door out this way and put it over here, then they are not able to get out. Or get back in, rather. There were so many villages in there. Now we have a whole new family that just came out. You take some bread over here, sir. You can have some bread, too. Everybody that's hopping on top of the building up here, I don't know what you're doing, but you take some bread. Just walking backwards, throwing bread, and these villagers are just following very slowly. This village is absolutely flourishing. I'm going to go say what's up to the Fletcher real quick. We have not paid him a visit since the recording of the last episode. What's up, dude? He's just, he's so ready to get out of here. He's standing right on top of the ladder. This guy's job was to keep watch over town, but then I actually just built a brand new tower right in front of him, obstructing his view. So this librarian right here, he's kind of also keeping watch over town. Also, in the comments of the last episode, you guys had wanted to name some of these cats. So first things first, we have Frank right here. And if we go over here, we actually have Lewis. Frank and Lewis, wherever they are, they're going to come back with me to the storage system real fast. Lewis and Frank are going to be chilling up here eternally. If you guys want to name any more cats, feel free to throw some names down in the comments section. Love hearing all the cat names that you guys have to throw down. Also, I think there's a chicken over here that needs some help. Yeah, he needs a little bit of help getting out of there. See ya, buddy. So, back to the main goal of the episode. We want to get a giant nightclub dance floor down here for these villagers to be able to have some fun. Life down here is just work, 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 so uh, they need a place to go to relieve some of that stress. There's a few places where I could build this. There's a lot of space in this corner down here that we had worked on stream. There's so much work. I have pathways to build over here, over here. If we hop on top of this tower, yep, we have path over here to build. A brand new house to put here. If we go on the other side of the portal, there's a giant space right here that I was thinking it would be large enough if we just excavated this whole skulk area right here and the deep slate in the center. It's kind of hollowed out right here, so it wouldn't take too long. Probably just one whole Twitch stream could do. By the way, it is twitch.tv slash waxfraud. If you want to join anytime, feel free. And it looks like there's a chest right here that I completely forgot about. Books, bones, bottles of enchanting, a lead, diamond hoe, and not bad, dude. The loot in these ancient cities is awesome, but I still never found that armor trim. Well, I have the beacon with me, but I realized I just took all of my diamonds that I collected down here back home. So let's just go grab some of those real quick. See ya, dude. I'll see you later. Back to the nether hub. Let's fly out real quick and over here. Whoa, all the sensors are going off. What's up, Clarique? How you been? Let me out of here. Ooh, it's morning. Perfect. Let's get out of here. Feels really good to be back home, man. We have been underground for so long. What's up, guys? Go say what up to Santa. Santa, get on that cake, man. What are you doing? Load up on a little bit of food for this project. Grab a handful of diamonds in case we want to move the beacons around. Because we have a lot of excavation. Oh, hold up, wandering trader. What's going on? Where are you doing? What are you doing? Sir, get back here, please. Thank you. I want these tropical fish. Thank you very much. That's super nice of you. Appreciate that a lot. Wait, get back here. I just want to thank you. Now we have some more fish to put into that new lush cave pond. Holding this bucket of fish looks so unnatural in the nether. It's weird. Hop through the portal. Head on down. Let's drop and free dive. And all the way over to the lush cave pond. And we have... Brand new fish going right here. And bang, boom, and bop. Ooh, those are cool. Some of the villagers have been making their way out here already. This is awesome. Because the village is all the way over there. And I'll fly over there just to show you how kind of far away it is. The actual storage system is all the way over here where Frank and Lewis are hanging out. And if we fly all the way over here, this on the other side of the ancient city is where the dance floor is going to be. So what I'm going to do is probably just start excavating right now. Most of this will probably be done on live stream because I don't really need to be doing this for YouTube. And what am I doing? Hold up. We need to put this here. Let's fly back. Oh, there's a zombie right there. Hold up. What are you doing, dude? You know what? We'll keep him right there. He's kind of cool. Even when we turn this thing all into quartz, we'll find a home for you, buddy. Oh my god. I think a skeleton just fell right next to me. Fly to the beacon real fast and get a diamond up here so we can get ourselves some haste too. That right there always feels much better. Let's jump down and uh, let's take all this stuff out with ease. Actually, I'm going to try something that I usually don't. This will be kind of different for the channel. Just with one little editing trick right here, we'll go bang, boom, and bop. And we are finally done. This is an extremely excavated area was a very long stream, and thank you guys for showing up if you did. We just cut out a little bit of deep slate and tough at the top, and turned most of it into moss. We have a bunch of shulker boxes all the way back at the storage house, completely filled up too. 
I think we got this bone mealing system over here completely overloaded. It is getting very full. Actually, how much do we have so far? If I look down in this barrel, not too bad. We'll just actually leave a lot of this here until we can compost it. But the skulk, we can actually take all the way down here, plop this guy right here, take these guys out, and throw them into all the barrels. Right now in this giant space, we have a 37 by 37 square. And we still have this cozy house all the way back here. We have to revamp this somehow. And during this excavation process, I noticed that a lot of these structures are repeated. They're pretty much the same. Like, I've seen this building like three or four times at least. So if you guys have any ideas how to transform these in different ways, let me know. I'd love to hear your guys' ideas down in the comment section down below. Can't believe there's still sensors back here. One all the way up here. And one back here. We got the center located, which is great, because I kind of want to make some circular formations coming right out of the center, because this dance floor is going to be groovy, and I don't want some straight lines. I want this to be curved, so we'll go four blocks this way, and then three, and then two, one, two more, and then one. We're going to repeat this pattern all four directions. These three right here should finish it up, and these three, let's actually just get a nice little look from the beacon up here. If I can make it, we're right here. Not too bad. Ooh, okay, so let's add a couple more in between all of these. All right, the spiral's not looking too bad. I like this a lot. What I'm going to do is cover these up with some quartz so I can mark where this was. Get the last few here on the outside, and then I believe there is one more in the middle. Yep, right here. Okay, not too bad. This is looking great. I think what we got to do is before we actually get the water in here in the axolotls, I just want to real quick show exactly how this is going to work. Let's float on over to the Skulk storage and grab us a, like as much as we can, honestly. Let's see, yeah, more than a stack. We already have redstone dust on us, which is perfect, so we just need to grab some glowstone, which is right here, and we can craft us some redstone lamps. Glowstone in the middle, redstone on the outside, and there we go. Now let's fly back and load up on a few axolotls. Home sweet home, we can drop in on our axolotl pond in the backyard. Get ourselves a yellow guy. Looks like a brown guy right here. I was thinking for the next few axolotls, we should grab some of them that have been named after the Twitch chatters. There is a channel point redemption on the Twitch streams that you can use to name yourself after an axolotl with your Twitch name, and I'm going to grab a couple lucky axolotls right now. The first one is Kiwi Fruit. Let's grab Cody Dale out of here. Let's grab Sierra. And this pink one over here seems to be stuck. We'll grab Leia right here. And last but not least, we will grab this guy right here, Rasta98. Let's go. And thanks again, guys, for showing up to all the Twitch streams. It really does mean a lot. So we have everything except for the observers, which I believe I left in this shulker box down here. And yep, there they are. First, we'll slap some axolotls down in here. These guys are swimming in circles. They are ready for the dance floor. We'll break the floor below them, though. I should actually hop down here. I don't want to hurt them. We're going to point all of the observers facing straight down at them, and the redstone lamps will go right on top. So it's not working, but I think I know the deal. I think the sensors actually have to be connected, so we'll put a sensor literally right below these. And that right there is how we get it done. So the observers are sensing me move around in the water, and okay, perfect. Let's actually close this back up. Let's get this one in here, and we'll close this up. Fly over here real quick, just so we can see it working from up above. I believe it is. We're okay. Perfect. The axolotl swimming around in there. We are good to go. Now, this design just needs to be transferred to the dance floor. So we should actually remove the moss. Because first, we'll have to go with a layer of redstone lamps. Then we'll have to go down with the layer of observers. Then the layer of water right here. And we should give the axolotls just a little bit of room to swim. Well, I thought that we were done excavating this area, but uh, I was sadly mistaken. First the ceiling, and now the basement. We gotta get this whole place excavated. Running back home real fast to grab just a little bit of quartz for the observers that we're about to use. Got a couple hundred emeralds that we're about to use on this cleric trading hall. We need endless redstone and glowstone to make these redstone lamps. We need about 12 stacks of lamps and 12 stacks of observers to get this done. If my math is right, we need about 12 stacks of observers and 12 stacks of these redstone lamps. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate the sale. You guys are helping me out a ton. Now we just need to head over to the Skulk Farm real quick. We have unlimited sensors down here. I made this farm with the intention of just gathering a bunch of Skulk blocks. Did not realize how many sensors would end up coming out of this. We have been going through this nether highway so much. Let's head back down. What's up, chickens? How you doing up here? I'm gonna drop down, and our progress on this build is actually, it's pretty nice so far. This level right here is gonna have the observers facing straight down onto this water. 
We already got a couple of the sensors down here, but before we get the last of the few observers in, I am going to actually just spam some observers down here on the rest of the farm. I think randomly is the best way to go with these. If you put the sensors on every block, it would probably light up every redstone lamp, so if we get these in random spots, it's going to make it look more like a disco. Sensor here, a sensor here, a sensor here, here, and here. Also, if you don't want any of these guys to make any noise, make sure you're placing them directly under the observers. You can see when they go off, they have these little redstone dust particles. And when they're not hooked up to the observer, just like these guys right here, they're going to end up making some noise. So we'll just go along this side and place some right here. Let's close this up here. As you can see before I close this up, it's really not that complicated. Just the sensors. We'll get the axolotls down below so they can swim. We'll give them about two, three blocks of swimming space. But then just the observers facing down with the lamps on top, it's really not that bad. The only headache about this build are the resources that are used. It takes a lot of glowstone, a lot of redstone, a lot of quartz for all these observers as well. All of the sensors are reacting to me placing the lamps down and it's just lighting up the dance floor already. This is awesome. Oh my god, this is amazing. I love this. This is, ugh, this is so cool. The villagers are going to have a great time. Now I feel like it needs some color, although the redstone lamp looks very cool as a floor on its own. Even when it's not lit up, connected to any redstone, it looks great. I think I'm going to make a lot more of these and start using it as a floor. And this right here is in the wrong spot. It goes one, two, three. Got to get the middle hooked up here and we are good to go. I'm going to take out just a little bit of the space below here. A lot of it is moss right here, which is kind of convenient. This thing is just constantly detecting the moving water down here, so we'll have to get that gone. But first, I feel like let's just get these axolotls in here. Let's make sure they have a nice, cool pond for them to be moving around in. Get that guy in here, and we will close this off. Let's actually go down. I have a little bit of an area where I can watch them swim around. I do feel like there's plenty of space in here, though, for at least a couple more axolotls. We'll probably move some down, but let's see exactly what the dance floor is looking like. Okay, this is awesome. You can see exactly where all of them are swimming around. This is crazy. This is absolutely perfect. I am loving this. The villagers are going to have so much fun. Let's get the stained glass over here. I think I have, I have red, orange, and yellow. Just to test the waters here, let's see. Maybe just start out with red on this one. Right along the edge of the quartz here. Followed by a nice strip of orange. Going back home just one more time. There are chickens all over the front of this house, man. We need to do a little bit of a cleanup. You guys just watch your backs, man. I'll be back at some point. Through the nether highway one more time. Back up at the top floor of the starter house. Let's place this down. We have a lot of dye to grab. Probably won't use all of these dyes, but I'm going to bring them all just in case. You never know. There might not be enough space, though. Just remember that I actually need to head over to the librarian trading hall because I need more glass. Thank you for the glass, sir. I appreciate that. And you, sir, thank you for the glass. I always forget how loud this trading hall is. There's one right above and right below, and it is just endless noise. We'll make some purple glass. We'll make... How, whoa, how is that the first time I've made purple glass? We'll get some blue glass here. Cool colors right next to this. Okay, the lime green looks like it's going to fit. Actually, wait, that's not even lime green. What am I talking about? There we go. Okay, the lime green looks like it's going to fit. Regular green right next to it. Not too bad. First time making light blue stained glass, I guess, too. I'm loving this dance floor, man. Blue right next to that, followed by the purple right here. We might have enough room for the pink and magenta. If my calculations are correct, this should fit. And okay, not too bad. We should probably get this working around every side. Get the last few pink ones in and not too bad. This is crazy. This dance floor is absolutely huge. Hundreds of villagers could have a good time out here. Looks like the middle is still needing some love. Let's actually get some tinted glass in there. I don't think I've used any tinted glass in this world yet, so that's pretty fun right there. Nice. That really made the middle pop out quite a bit. Now for the walls, though. I feel like we need to make the walls pop, and I feel like anti-courts would be probably just some black concrete. Also, a barrier between the floor and the wall might be needed. We could get a layer of tinted glass out here. This outside part and the walls, I'm taking inspiration from the subserver as well, but this time from the Halloween event. People in the subserver have built some crazy stuff, and if you guys haven't built anything in there, feel free to hop in. Well, black concrete means two things. We're gonna have to kill some squids, and then we're gonna have to head to the concrete maker. You lonely squid out here, sorry, buddy. You too, bud, sorry about that. Gotcha. And gotcha. You, sir, I'm not really so sorry about. You got a menacing look. You too, buddy. I remember that one thing you did. Grab a little bit of sand and grab a little bit of gravel. We'll see if one shulker box is enough. 
This concrete maker is something that we haven't really finished yet. It's just a little shack on the beach that's left unfinished over here. Hop on in, we'll lay the shulker box down and we should get to work. Get the concrete powder in the dispenser and this door is 100% closed. I do not have my totem on me. Let's get to work right here. One day this build will be getting completed. Man, I am excited for this black concrete. We have spent so much time turning everything in the ancient city into something that looks like it belongs on Y level zero. But sometimes it's necessary to add some really dark walls to a really colorful dance floor. I've used this black concrete before to make the Hall of Appreciation down on the bedrock. It's probably about 5,000 blocks that way, but once this thing is entirely enclosed with black concrete, it looks like it's an infinite space. Ooh, looking crazy already. I'm excited to close this thing up. I've noticed there's a couple spots that get turned on a little bit less than others, like right over here. I probably forgot to put a few sensors over here, so I'll have to get there too. If you zoom in, you might as well have your eyes closed. We are completely blind until we back up a little bit and all of a sudden we are in a dance floor and we are all alone in the, probably the biggest dance floor in any ancient city. The black concrete is piercingly dark and also these basalt pillars are looking pretty good. I brought the walls up all the way to where I excavated the deep slate and left the end rods up there just for a little bit of light for now. But I think what we're going to do is put tinted glass all the way at the top just for a bit of reflection. Now to decorate these walls, I guess let's start in the corner over here. I'd like to make some diamond shapes with these quartz. One, two, three on each side. End it off with one, two, one, two. Put four in the middle and let's take a step back. I want to see exactly what this looks like. I am loving this, except for the four in the middle, probably going to take those out, and then we should get this replicated on every side. We'll go one, two, one, two, one, two. Got one, two again, and you know what? That does look better. Actually, we could get that guy in the middle and then take these four out. Ooh, that's looking nice. Get some end rods on top of here. We'll go down real quick, and we'll get some end rods on the bottom side. Actually, that's looking nice. Not you, bud. You do not belong there. Man, if we could make colored end rods, that would be just outstanding. Let's get this right here, this right here. We could probably get the end rods going right here too. And boom, last one. Let's take these out down to the bottom. Actually, I'm seeing a bunch of torches down here we need to take out as well. No more torches in sight, only redstone lamp light from here on out. This is looking crazy. It brings like a dark fantasy vibe to the walls. Beacon is still sticking through the black concrete. I'm going to have to get that taken out, but the ceiling's probably going to have to go up about three to four levels. But before we even think about that, I'm probably going to finish the quartz on the walls here. I can hear it raining through that hole where the beacon light is coming through. It is always raining in this world, even when we're down in the ancient city. Somebody please tell me why it will never stop raining in this world. This bat is here at a party, causing some skulk sensor action over there. Let's go. We got the walls finished. We finally have the floor finished after about 20 hours of Twitch streams. The quartz block, diorite wall, and end rod combination against this concrete wall is looking really nice. Before any of these were placed here, it was just a black hole. We left this front entrance open for the time being. I just wanted to make sure all of the walls were looking good before we completed the build. And we actually raised the ceiling a little bit before we get that tinted glass up there. But down here on the floor, we actually have a DJ booth down here now made entirely out of quartz. We have stairs that go up both sides here so you can get up to a note block, which I haven't placed yet. Bam, there we go. No music discs quite yet, but there is a way to make this pop just a little bit more. Let's get some frog lights down in here. We'll get the ochre going, we'll get the verdant, and then we'll get the pearlescent one more time. Bam, you are in the corner. Okay, we got that lit up there. So before we call the floor done, I just want to jump up. There's a couple spots that are a little bit dark usually. There's a couple of these that don't ever get lit up. We are going to hop behind the scenes over here. Don't mind the road that's unfinished. We're going to get some wood and some stone in here eventually. Let's hop down this ladder that should take us to the axolotls. I am loving this viewing center. It's kind of like an unfinished aquarium for these guys. We got to get some bone meal down here. We have three more axolotls and I think six more skulk sensors should do on this side. I'm going to swim in, close that up so no one can fly out. And just a couple of sensors can go here and there. One right there and one right there should do. Place the last three right in the middle so they have ample amount of room to explore. I believe we have 12 axolotls in here now, which should be more than enough. Let's uh, get out of here before I run out of oxygen. Shouldn't have to come back down here anymore, but if we do, we have a nice space. Still have a little bit of work to do on the exterior. As you can see, it is way too dark out here. Been trying to get the rest of the city to look very nice and bright like this, but when you go all the way over here, we have a giant black wall. And that doesn't really fit, so maybe let's get some quartz pillars on the outside. 
pick all these guys up. We have a few stacks of them. If we need more, we'll make more. Let's hop up. Well, that certainly helps a little bit. Let's make a couple of them just so we can see if that works or not. Pop over here and that'll do donkey. I love peeking around the corner over here. It immediately looks like a party. Let's hop in and hop right back out because I realized I uh, forgot the music discs. Just been keeping them here for safe measures. The LA's actually take very good care of your property. They don't scratch any of your music discs. They don't even touch them. Let's at least grab one of each. We have Cat, 13, Relic, Pig Step, 5, and Blocks. Almost forgot other side. How could I forget other side? Riding back in with the goods. I feel like we gotta get some speakers here using some note blocks. That's working, that's working, looking good. We get an anvil on each side. I'm actually gonna get an anvil in between too. Getting some speakers down below for the people up close on the dance floor. Let's also stack them up going all the way around. Well, the place is definitely gonna be sounding good now with all these speakers everywhere, but the insulation of the sound is gonna be poor without a ceiling. We're gonna get the polished basalt all the way around the corner of the ceilings. What we're gonna do is get a little bit of crisscross action going up here with the polished basalt. Fill in the squares with some tinted glass. Then when this is all covered up, you're gonna cover up the tinted glass with some black concrete. Just sending this whole build into the shadow realm. With every block placed, the build is disappearing before our eyes. It looks like technically we are now in the Badlands instead of the deep dark, so for now we're gonna have to leave some torches up here. The roof up here right now is a very, very dark place, but if we jump down past all these quartz pillars, we have a brand new path that leads right up to one specific blackstone stair. If we happen to hit that secret button that opens this door, we, uh, we kind of get led into a brand new disco. This guy's going crazy back there. In the corner over here, we have Disco Golem. What's going on, buddy? We had Disco Cat all the way up here. He was the guy spinning the discs, but uh, Disco Cat got pushed off by this guy who's just nonstop spinning. This guy maybe has always wanted to be a DJ, but uh, hey, buddy, you can't just take Disco Cat's spot. Trying to get Disco Cat back up here, but all these guys just keep pushing him out of the way. Okay, I guess every you know what? Everybody gets to be the DJ. Going down into the green room here, there is a little bit of a setup here for the DJ before they go out on stage. They can uh, take a little bit of a rest on the couch over here, make a little bit of a meal on the table, then they can head up and do their set. This right here is probably one of the coolest venues any DJ is ever going to play at. All of the tinted glass on the ceiling is so ominous still, but I love how well it reflects the quartz on the walls. This thing was absolutely insane. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members, all of the new YouTube members, all the new Twitch subscribers. Thank you all. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. Today we're down in the ancient city. We are going to restore the entire ancient city, especially this giant deep slate warden head portal. This whole portal right here is about to be turned into quartz. The zombie up here is just gonna have to like it. Thank you guys for watching the previous episode where we had built this giant ancient city disco. Let's hop in here right now. We have Rave Cat all the way in the center. This thing is wild. It's entirely powered by axolotls that are getting sensed by the skulk sensors, which are powering the observers that eventually turn on these redstone lamps. Tinted glass on the wall looking super ominous, and these giant quartz diamonds on the wall looking pretty nice. Something kind of strange up here. Uh, we do have the Disco Golem right here who won't get away. We also have Disco Cat who keeps getting shoved off because all of these villagers, they just keep trying to hang out up here. But I think I know why the green room down here has a bed. If we take this bed out and replace it with maybe just some mangrove stairs. There we go. Actually, let's take that out and point it this way. See, now that's more of a couch area, and this is a nice little green room where the DJ will pop out. And I think these villagers will try to get out of here now. Sorry, buddy. My bad. Time to enjoy the dance floor. We're going to let Disco Cat be the DJ again. We have plenty of discs to use, but it was requested in the last episode that we play Pig Step, so I think we should play Pig Step right now. This song absolutely rocks, and these guys are just still hovering over the DJ booth. What's going on? We'll save that for later. Put this back. Let Disco Cat get all the glory from the DJ booth. Eventually, more villagers are going to come down here. We are actually going to bring them down and name them after the chatters in the live streams. By the way, guys, thank you for stopping by to all the Twitch streams. It is twitch.tv slash waxfraud if you haven't been there. And we are doing some YouTube streams more often lately. This town is absolutely coming together, though. We have towers everywhere. This giant train station that we had recently built is all the way over here. Oop, almost stopped the go-kart there. I think I just called this minecart a go-kart also. That's kind of strange, but uh, this thing actually leads all the way up to the giant ancient city portal that's shaped like a warden head. 
I have a bunch of quartz set up here to go, but I think we're going to need to probably triple or maybe quadruple this amount. And we also have some deep slate that's all the way up on the east side up here, and it's kind of in the way. Also, it'd be much less of a problem if this entire cavern over here wasn't filled with lava and this entire place over here wasn't filled with water. Actually, if you go in here, there are sensors right here, and uh, that makes me think that there might be more shriekers over here. So let's actually just take these out real quick and then I'm going to head backwards. I don't want to activate any Shrieker right now. If a Warden came out, it would just start attacking all of the villagers because I'm pretty sure that it just attacks anything that makes noise. I think I just saw a Creeper up there. We should be careful. This is a spot where they can definitely fall from. I'm going to build over to this lava a bit. I want to see if it's actually at this level. If it is, I think what I'll do is just drop some water on it. Oop, there it is. The main goal right now is to kind of get all of this to stop hanging over me, and if I could, it would be nice if the lava would stop going right into the oak planks down here. Just gotta let this fall for a little bit longer. It takes lava so long to fall, but the oak planks on this main level are gonna be pretty much the only part that are not made out of quartz. Take the last of the floor deep slate out. One more part that needs to be filled in. That's looking nice and clean. Actually, I see one right here that needs to go. There we go. Actually, under here is a part that I had never checked out before. I don't know why, but I had missed it until now. It shows a bunch of different redstone applications. Anybody that doesn't know anything about redstone could come in here and get a little bit of a grasp on the situation. Looks like this is a skulk sensor output setup. We have something set up for some redstone lamps. We have the archery setup over here and the lectern redstone setup. Back here, it just looks like maybe some living quarters. I'm not even really sure what this is. Should light this up. Nothing's going to spawn here, but man, this is just very strange. It'd be cool if some villagers moved in here. I'm going to turn all this into quartz as well. Looks like there's an automatic piston door set up here as well that seems to be unlocked right now. No more lava in sight, which is fantastic, but uh, we do have water falling from there still. We'll have to get some sponges and get that out. And then we also have some water coming from all the way up here. Let's go see exactly where this is coming from. And we're here, and yep, there's two creepers right there. Okay, this is perfect. Hey, dude, you can just leave me alone. Thank you very much. You too, dude, all the way out there. Just leave me alone. Luckily, there's some parts of the caves all the way up here that I have lit up with some glow berries. Let that water slowly fall down, and you know what? In order to take care of this water over here, let's uh, let's just go get those sponges from back home. But before we go, I guess we should figure out why these sheep are all the way on the outskirts of town. I'm going to leave these guys back with some hay, and this actually is going to give me an opportunity to show you guys the long play build that we had just made. We have some brand new terraced crop farms over here in the corner, and I thought this made this area look nice and cozy. It actually covers up a spider farm over here. If we want to make a brand new spider farm, we certainly can. We got potatoes, beetroot, we got wheat and carrots up there as well. But back here, we have all of the string we could ever possibly need. We already have a spider farm, but you know, we could always make another one. And actually, I have not taken this loot yet, so let's break these chests and take everything back. You know, that actually reminds me, while we were building the Lush Cave Pond all the way over here on the other side of the ancient city, I had run into two more farms over here. There's a spider farm and a zombie farm. You actually have to climb all the way up this waterfall that I had made. Hop on a few lily pads to get over there, and we will climb all the way up the waterfall. Go past a few blocks of the glow berries, and we are in a hidden cave system that, uh, well, it's not so hidden. I guess if you were there on stream, you've been here a couple times. Pretty sure if we round the corner up, yep, there it is. We have one farm. That's the spider farm, and actually, hold on. I haven't taken anything from these chests either. Thank you very much. Then if I just hop down here, yep, there's the other farm. Let's go this way, and I don't think I actually took anything from these chests. This is a zombie farm. All over this ancient city, I'm sure there's more farms. This is just the ones that I found exposed. I lit up most of the cave systems around here, so hopefully nothing else is spawning. And we're actually right back to where these sheep are. I should go get that hay. Level 3 rocket spiral up, and did we make it? We did not. Let's give this another shot here. Let's go all the way up, and we made it. Slamming into everything possible. Let's go home real quick. You might notice a brand new detail in the nether highway. We have black stone buttons on every single frog light. I thought it was a nice little touch that matched the rest of this nether hub. I'm going to take a stop at the giant circular wheat field because I need a couple stacks of bread and I also need a bunch of wheat to get these animals bred down at the ancient city. You may have one seed. Please leave me alone. Okay, you guys may have one seed also. Please leave me alone. These chickens are not going to stop following me. Big on, I say, big on! Alright, these guys are actually not, uh, they're not being gone. I'm going to smack you again. Please be gone. Alright, I'll give you some seeds. Just be gone! Why are there so many chickens here, dude? 
I haven't made any really big structures out of mud yet either, so all of this hay is going to be good for getting all of those materials too. While we're home, let's grab some more rockets and maybe some more food. Take all the golden carrots I can get right now, and looks like we're running a little bit low on the rockets. I'll have to make some more. But first, let's head over to the toolsmith farm, or the weaponsmith trading hall actually. Hop in here, let's get some iron traded, and let's get ourselves some emeralds. Thank you very much, appreciate the emeralds, I appreciate the mending. So the last couple batches of iron here, thank you very much. Let's head on over to the masonry, which is on the other side of the map on the second island, all the way over by the mushroom farm. Across the ocean we go, let's land here nice and gently, there we go. Alright guys, I am here for some quartz, thanks for being here, I really do appreciate you. Should take some of these pillars as well. All right, we are loaded up on quartz again. Before we go back, I actually have some renaming of some tools to do. I have this axe right here that uh, seems to be nameless. Not sure why, but uh, it costs eight points to rename this axe axe frog, but you know what? It's worth it. It's also just going to be nice to be able to tell the difference between the fortune shovels and the silk shovels, as well as the axes and the hoes and the pickaxes for that matter. All right, let's hop back down. We got some chickens all the way up there on the deep slate, too. Sheep, where are you at? All the way over here. And, okay, we got creepers and zombies. The chicken out here, too. What's going on? Okay, hold up. Let's use the bow. We got a lot of these guys here right now. This is crazy. You guys, I'm just... All I want to do is get the sheep back right now, and you're kind of, uh, you're kind of ruining that. This guy was trying to sneak up on me right here, and he is just so stuck. Also, this guy saw me from so far. Zombies, I'm so glad that creepers cannot see as far as you. A lot of free XP right now. Wait, hold on, buddy. No, Mike, there's so many. Get out of here. All right, sheep, come to me. Other sheep, you come to me as well. Actually, wait, let's make a baby sheep real fast. All right, let's go. All three of you guys come with me. Get these sheep over into the center of town a little bit, kind of next to this villager breeder. Also in the area so the librarian tower and flutter tower can keep watch over them. We do not need you guys escaping again. And you know what? Now that we got the sheep over in the center of town, I did forget we have. Oh, there's another sheep all the way over here. What do you know? But I did forget that we actually have some cows that are left up in this staircase. Whoa, we have a slime up here too. That was crazy. Hold up, buddy. Get out of here. The cows are defending this slime. What are you guys doing? Cow, you gotta move. Slime, you gotta move too. Thank you. Whoa! Get out of here! I'm just gonna smack you with the bow instead. Well, we made an unintentional slime farm down here, I guess. One baby cow, and then we will be on our way here. There we go. Okay, guys, follow me. One last guy, and I guess the sheep. Okay, let's close that. You guys are now a part of the ancient city. Everybody say what up to the man. The man, uh, meet everybody. I'm gonna try to pull these guys over to the center of town a little bit more. Or at least away from that wall over there where they keep climbing up into that cave. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you here. I'm just going to sprint away really fast, take the hay away, and you guys are just going to be left to wander on your own. Cows are taking a liking to these city tunnels, and you know what, dude? I bet you're going to take a liking to this bread. Bread for everyone, guys. We need more villagers. I've been slowly putting beds over here by the train station as well to get the villagers to kind of migrate over here, and it seems to be slowly working. Iron golems are getting caught up over here on the wall. Let's actually jump up. I see, yeah, there's some villagers in here as well. Take all the bread. Take it all. Take all of the bread, sir, please. Without the water and the lava dripping here, it's actually very clean. We have the city tunnel hooked up over here. And on the south side, we have the city tunnel hooked up as well. But actually, I don't think we put the oak stairs in. Yep, we got to put those in. And the stone brick stairs to connect the city pathway. Nothing that connects on this side yet. We have some empty space back here where we actually took out some buildings. We're going to get another librarian tower right here. As you can see, we just have this giant dance club on the other side. Actually, there's a building all the way back here. Yep, right here that we have not transformed yet as well. Thank you for all the ideas on how to revamp these buildings in different ways. Also, I appreciate the comments on the last episode. I'm going to take a lot of those ideas into consideration and probably do a couple more live streams and get that taken care of. We really got to start putting work in on this portal area, though. So first things first, let's maybe just take down this little inner structure wall. I think what we'll do is probably replace a lot of this with some stone. That right there and that right there. I'm thinking everywhere we have the wool, we'll probably replace with some spruce logs. Strip this down. We're going to have to repeat this pattern. I'm not really going to know what it looks like until we really get it repeated. Glad we have efficiency five on these shears, though, to make everything go a lot faster. Okay, I do like these pillars, but I'm thinking on the bottom we should probably just get some spruce stairs and replace these as well. 
And that right there, actually that is looking a little bit better for me. I want to get the stone stairs right here replaced. Looks like they start upside down, go right side up, and then upside down again. Kind of like the gold farm. We're going to fill the rest of this in with some stone bricks. And actually if we take a step back, as long as we don't misplace anything. Uh, actually let's replace these chiseled right here with chiseled stone. That's actually not too bad. Get this trap doored up and replicate it all the way around. Also, there's definitely a cat in here somewhere, but uh, I don't... I hope it's not under the floor. Okay, I keep hearing that cat. It's got to be in here somewhere. Where are you, buddy? The flames are burning super loud, and the cat is meowing even louder as well. I hope that... Oh, what's up, buddy? Hold up. If I go over here, can he see me? All right, I'm right here. I got the fish. Well, he just walked away from me. I'm going to have to force this. Ah, be my friend. That's what I'm talking about, buddy. Follow me. You, my friend, are going to be Portal Cat. Please stay right here. Thank you very much, Portal Cat. If you're going to learn how to restore the ancient city, you got to watch and learn, buddy. What are you doing here, dude? I thought you weren't allowed to spawn down here. He must have fallen somewhere down below. Oh, he must have come from this water. What is going on? I thought I got rid of that. Well, let's go up and fix real quick. I thought this was going to be more of an easy fix earlier. Let's grab that and that. Okay, now that seems to be very effective. Let's hop down here. I really hope no creepers make their way back down. They are not supposed to spawn down here, and uh, I don't want anything to happen to Portal Cat. Okay, back to work we go. Hold up, one more cat. You're gonna join Portal Cat. Yeah. Even an Enderman's coming to hang out. Inside layer, not looking too bad. I think we should get some cactus, some jungle saplings down here to make it look a little bit more green. Doesn't take too much color to make all the brown and gray pop. And now to work on the outer layer right here, we have some stairs leading into some chiseled blocks. Every once in a while, you'll see that there are some staircases leading up to the top. I'm actually going to replace this with stone. We also acquired one more cat. What's up, cat? I think there's a villager, a couple of them at least in here. Yeah, he's taking a liking to this vi This will be a village eventually, buddy. You need help getting out of the- there you go. This carpet's probably blocking him from being able to get in here. This will be your home eventually, sir, I promise. Let's, uh, there's a couple more st yeah, right here. Let's take this out, and this will lead us up to the top level. Yeah, right there. This is great. Now we just need to take out this entire level right here. I guess let's just start taking out all this deep slate, too. Whoever designed these ancient cities really did a good job. I like how unique the layout is. Really does make for an interesting transformation. Torch flowers in between the lanterns. Cherry saplings right above these guys. We have an iron golem taking a liking to this hallway so far. I actually like this too. It's nice and cozy now. We have a couple villagers that keep walking in and around here. Some light on the corners. Nice little shroom light will do. Actually, some shroom lights right here would look pretty cool too. Let's hop across. Too much light is no such thing down here. We have candles to light in between all of these shroom lights now. As you can see right next to us, we actually have a lot of the deep slate taken out. I have the chiseled quartz that's taken place. Uh, I thought this would actually look the best. We have most of this first hallway done, except for some of the lighting here, and of course there is some Russian water going straight over the hallway. If I hop down here, I have a little bit of a staircase that pops up right over here, but then you immediately crash into some water, and this is just an open case. We need to close this thing. We have sensors right here, and actually if we look this way, I'm actually- this is terrifying. We have an ancient city that's underwater. How am I supposed to get all of the ancient city if it's underwater, dude? Oh my god, there's a tower over here. We are going to have to probably save this for another episode. Okay, yep, there's a shrieker down there. We should, you know what, let's just, let's get back home real quick and uh, we'll deal with this later. Pop right back out to where we have some fresh air. Okay, I do have the sponges with me and I think it's about time we actually get to work on that little excavation process. Be Ouch. Because if we hop over here, and by the way, we have been taking out a lot of this obsidian. It's been, okay, like three layers so far. It's been a lot of work. We have a lot of obsidian, and we're going to get a lot more. But for this water opening right here that leads to the underwater ancient city, which is probably going to have to be left for another episode, I think let's sponge it up. Hop right up over here, and boom. These do an incredible amount of work so fast. Just going to spam them up here in this corner so I can kind of get uh, my foot on the ground. Get some more down here, and I can actually probably start spamming some torches. End rods will do for now. I'm actually going to go over here real quick, take out these sensors. I don't want anything getting to that shrieker down there. This hallway right here just wants to be able to breathe some fresh air. We got to get these sponges in action. Get some sponges here. We go. Sponges all the way down here. Sometimes there's way too many water source blocks, so what I'm going to do is just place a bunch of random oak planks around here so that the sponge can have something to grab onto. We've officially turned this into a sponge house. It actually turns out I do have my hose, so let's grab all these, take them to the nether real quick. 
we don't really even have to go anywhere. We can just hang out in the highway. Let's just set everything across the ceiling, and it kind of just sounds like we're in a kitchen now. One of the most forgotten and most satisfying sounds in the game. And now we just repeat this process until all that water's gone. Head back down to the problem over here. Honestly, this is looking very nice so far. What's up, dude? How you doing? How you liking the new build? He loves it. Thanks for being here, dude. I appreciate you. A couple of shroom lights on our way over here. And actually, you know what? Now that we're at this hallway, we should probably just start putting a little bit of this random oak over here. I have a lot left over, and I might as well just continue this hallway. But actually, you know what? That shrieker was on the other side of this right here, which I'm pretty sure this skulk wall is actually just covering up the rest of that water. Let's get some wool real quick. Hopefully there's not too many. I'd like there to be down to zero by now. Honestly, I don't want the warden to come out at all. Now, I know there's a little cave back here. All of the water is actually right here being held up by this skulk. But if we sneak past behind this building... Looks like this is the bottom of that tower that's underwater. Let's go back a little bit further. We have a catalyst. We have more sensors, I see. And immediately we see a shrieker. Okay, so if I go over here and I just place one wool, what happens? I don't know why, but I thought the wool would trip the sensor when it hits the water, but I guess not. Let's take this guy out. Not bad. Let's take the rest of these sensors out. It looks like for right now, there's no shriekers around. Okay, I spoke way too soon. Let's go up here. We have one more shrieker to find. Pop up a little bit, cover you up, cover these guys up. Okay, we have an entire build. Actually, this one is... Okay, there's some shriekers back there, but this one is half not covered by water, which is kind of cool, and I do see some more loot. Well, I'm seeing one shrieker, and I'm seeing two more shriekers right here, so this is going to be an issue. We're probably going to have to set at least one of them off. Try to at least do our best to cover this guy up. We only have the one strike right now, so I'm just going to go for it. Let's take you out, let's take you out, and let's go over here and take this guy out right here. I'll take these streakers, thank you very much. These sensors, those are mine now too. And you know what? What's in the loot boxes? A little bit of swift sneak over here. What do you got for me? Not bad. So the sensors are going off and they're not setting off any shriekers, so that's pretty good. Kind of gives me the confidence to go under the water here. Because actually, if I just dig right on the other side of this, I thought the skulk was going to be the barrier. But nope, actually, there's a little bit of deep slate and wow, diamonds immediately. Here's the rest of the ancient city. This is crazy. Okay, so we popped out over there, and here is more loot. Wow. What do you got for me? Not too bad. That might be the last shrieker, and if that's the case, what I'm going to do is just swim right over to it right now and just take it out. Boom. Okay, dude. Okay, we might actually have taken care of all of the Shriekers, which is perfect. What I'm going to do is actually set up a wall of Skulk or Deep Slate right here so we can finally get rid of the uh, the water. Then we can take out all of this Skulk and Deep Slate and finally give this build a little bit of fresh air. I was luckily able to get some of the end rod lighting on the outside here, but I believe I have some more to finish all the way over here by the nightclub. I fly here. Yep, these are the last of the end rods. I actually ran out. I had to go back home to grab more, but now we have plenty of stacks. Lighting down here is not looking too bad. We actually probably should get some buttons or some trap doors on this last level. Of course, trap doors are going to be the answer. Just running through these halls feels amazing. Actually, wait, we should get some barrels in here. Maybe the villagers will want to come through these halls a little bit more if there's more workstations. Barrel here, barrel there, barrel everywhere. Cat, you're going to have to move there, guy. And also, you, Cat, you're going to have to move. Let's get you guys out of the way. You can sit, and I'll put the barrel there. And you're going to have to move, buddy. Let's run over here. You can sit on that barrel, and I'm going to put the barrel right there. This iron golem is just pushing this cat into the corner. You better stop that, dude. If I come back later and you're still pushing the cat, there's going to be repercussions. We actually do have the entrance for the most part done. What I could do is get a little bit of light right here. But we still have a little bit of deep slate to excavate. This deep slate at the end of the train station has got to go. We'll get these stairs replaced. We got bing, bang, boom, and bop. We'll connect the oak up to these quartz bricks here for the walkway. And then actually, you know what? We're going to replace all of this dark oak with some quartz bricks. See you later, buddy. You served us well. Instead of fences, we're using end rods for the pillars. Get some more quartz stairs on top of these guys. Now, if we go up the stairs, there should be a very clean exit over to here. Actually, wait, we have a little bit more deep slate to take out. Get the chiseled right here, get some more stairs hooked up, and there we go. Now we have a way to finally hook up to these chiseled blocks over on this level. Smack all these guys in. I asked the zombie, and he absolutely loves the quartz, so I'm going to keep on doing it down here. A couple more bings, a couple more bangs, a couple more booms, and a couple more bops. 
Now we can walk through the end rod pillars here and up onto the quartz bricks. This is actually looking like a nice platform. I think on this next part, though, we should rise up with some more chiseled blocks. This will add some nice layered textures. Gotta grab this deep slate. And as you can see, we did decorate this first level with some barrels, some jungle saplings, and some torch flowers. But these shroom lights right here, we should probably get them covered up with some trap doors. These and the cherry trap doors are the ones that allow for the light to still poke through. Get these slapped up over on this side. And you might notice that there's no rushing water sounds anymore because we actually took everything out. This whole area over here is entirely cleared. This was a giant structure right here. This was half a structure that was eaten up by the skulk wall. On the other side here is entirely, it's just all water. Watch, if I hop up over here to this little hallway that we haven't constructed yet, and we start taking out some skulk, we are now in an underwater ancient city paradise. So I'm just covering this up real quick because we don't need to be in there. That's just going to have to be for an entirely different episode. I'm glad we have all this space cleared out, though. We have this barn over here that we made on the YouTube stream, and thank you guys for coming over to that if you did. We have all these cows and sheep that are going to be eating bread in here now. It's going to be really nice not having to wander around looking for him any longer. This guy's just chilling up on the wall. Hold up. He might need some help getting down. There's no way he can get back. Uh, sir, hold up. Are you? Hold up. There we go. Sorry, dude. He's good. He's just going to run around for a little bit, and uh, you'll find a job. Nice. we got farmers starting to move over this way towards this wall. This place is huge. Just for reference, we are all the way over on this side of the ancient city. If we use a level 3 rocket to get all the way over here, it's it's nuts. This This place is huge. What we did in like episode 1 through 20 is what we've done here in the past three episodes. But let's fly down. There's actually this build right here. There's part of the ancient city that's going underwater. There's this tower back here that uh, also goes underwater. But if we walk up here, there's actually just a little bit of loot that we need to grab as well. There's an enchanted golden apple. We have name tags and more disc fragments. Other than that, though, we did grab a lot of loot from these little structures. We have so much stuff. Back to business, though. Let's get right here, and let's get moving. I have some oak wood on me. Yeah, let's get these top layers moving. Deep slate be gone. And please make room for the bricks. Back at the portal now. The main focus here. Let's actually get the layer of bricks back up. Get a solid line of bricks around the east side. Then as we start to replace these on the outside here, I want to actually get a little bit of texture going. So we have the block of quartz, we have the quartz bricks, and the chiseled quartz blocks that we're going to use all three together going up here. So maybe just on this outside, we'll start using the regular block of quartz. All this deep slate is about to get replaced once and for all. The buddy's still up here. Buddy, hey, you over here, you're going to love it. You stay right here, it's going to be nice and cozy. Straight down, and build straight back up. Next to this reinforced deep slate right here, we're just going to line it up with some quartz bricks. Get more of these going up the sides as well. Now I'm thinking just to light up this portal area, let's use a little bit of end rod action. I'll have to take a step back real quick to truly appreciate the lighting the end rods give us. That's actually not bad at all. I did forget one right there, but actually these quartz pillars do provide us a little bit of a circular pattern if you put them on their side. Line up the top with some more bricks too. Now I gotta figure out how to get these ears made, and this guy is gonna make it very difficult. We could start with this side all the way over here. The side that's parallel with the bricks on the main structure, we could just turn into some chiseled for the ear. And the middle part, we'll just use some regular quartz blocks. The inside part of the ear, we're gonna go back to the bricks. Get the regular block of quartz in the middle, and just to light it up, let's get some more end rods. Fly away real quick to get ourselves a look at the ear, and you know what? That's not bad. Okay, buddy, we're going to do the same thing over here, and you're going to have to like it. Buddy, I'm coming down here to build, and if you smack me, then there's, there's going to be some consequences. Uh, oh, oh, buddy, come on. No, 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 hold on. Let me build real quick. Get that right there. That, nice. You're doing good. You're doing very good. Flying around, I also noticed that these deep slate tile walls right here, they need to be gone. I'm going to get some diorite probably right here instead, like this. Because, unfortunately, we still do not have any quartz walls. Slap some end rods on the top of these, as well as some of these diorite walls over here. I did notice down here that there were a couple of the soul sands missing, so I'm going to run through right here. I think there was just about eight of them, so hopefully I've grabbed enough. No, actually, I'm missing one more. Got one more guy, and wait a second, hold up, there's a cow right here. What are you doing up here, dude? You know what? You're thinking outside the box, and I'll allow it, sir. Let's head over here and get the last one in. There we go. I got some flint and steel to get these flames going. And there we go. Now it's complete. The portal is entirely transformed with quartz now. This is just insane. 
We got some glowstone to light up the tippy top up here, but I'm thinking the top side of the ears, it's a little bit dark, so let's just replace one of these blocks, not both of those. I guess we can get an extra chiseled now. There we go, a little bit of glowstone. Inside of the ear has some light with the end rod action, and if we go over here, I'm just thinking that it's gonna look like an earring, I know, but if we hang an end rod from the ear right here, it is going to give the side a little bit of light. <laughs> That's so funny, it looks like an earring on the portal. Let's move up the sides just a little bit. I want to hang up just a couple more end rods. Get the diorite walls. I'll actually just hang the chains. We're not going to use any wood today. Maybe just use one less chain right there with an end rod and one more. We also added some stairs down here that weren't a part of the original build, just for some added details. And actually, if we go downstairs below, what's up, fisherman? How you doing? Let's go under here. Some of the quartz has actually started taking over the walls. With all of these walls looking so clean now, I feel like we should just take out the rest of this cracked deep slate and replace it with a bunch of spruce logs. I actually have a bunch on me. We could just get those right here and just all facing up. Once you get past the constant burning sound, it's actually pretty homey in here. Let's get all this stripped here. As I'm taking this room out right here, I'm kind of wondering, do we even need this redstone contraption? It actually, all it does is just sense right here. As you can see, it just worked right there. It opens and closes these doors. I think we might just end up turning these into some living quarters instead. Yeah, also, you know what? The extra redstone contraptions and redstone dust, that might just come in handy. Thank you, Mojang, but we're going to turn this into a very nice bedroom. And after a little bit of work, we finally have the living quarters complete. I can actually put a bed in here or back here if I want to make it nice and cozy. We have some living quarters. The villagers can finally move their way in here. We have all of the redstone set up except for the automatic door. This is actually just going to be replaced by two little openings so that the villagers can freely move in and out without any block. I tried to keep the color palette pretty simple, but uh, we ended up using quite a bit of flowers in here. We have job blocks in every single corner, so I'm pretty excited for when the villagers decide to start moving in here. Bounce around up top looking for a couple things that I still need to take care of, and I did notice that we have some missing amethyst clusters out here, and I'm gonna run out. So we only have the three, two, and one left, and that is just in the wrong spot. We have a couple more at least to get. I'm thinking maybe about 20. Luckily enough, we actually uncovered a couple of the amethyst geodes, and I can fly right up here and start taking these out. This one might be in the most convenient spot possible. We are right above the train station, and we can just come up here whenever we want. I believe this one right here might be the last one, and if we actually go back here, we can start placing some of the amethyst clusters on the ground, as well as a lot of the flowers that we have with us. We have a giant orange shulker box, and, and uh, this is filled with all of the two-block flowers that we're going to need to place. We got lilacs everywhere. Never going to get tired of these pitcher plants. Start running up and down with the peonies, and go back with the rose bushes. Last but not least, we are not forgetting the sunflowers. There's quite a few places that are missing the flowers, like this little field here next to the new barn, but it's also missing some of the light fixtures that'll help give it some love. Use some end rods and some mushroom blocks. We're spamming a lot more of the bone meal around the sides, and I believe this is going to be the only skulk wall that we have left over. We can't take this down, it's holding up all of the water. Next, we're going to get these torch flowers around here, and actually now's a good time to show you the back door of this giant disco. We had enough time to get back into the green room down here. All these guys are still trying to be one DJ, but the only true DJ is Disco Cat. We can struggle to hop down. These guys really just don't want me to get down into the green room. Come on, guys, please let me in. There we go. And we have a spruce door right here that hops in, and you actually are not able to get through that way. Only one way out, no way back in. We can actually hop back here. This place is missing a couple torch flowers itself. You might notice that everywhere is starting to look a little bit different. We have all the pathways starting to get covered up by all these azalea trees. And we have a brand new hidden pond back here that's going to be a brand new home for these axolotls. Jump on over here, we'll slap you in and we'll slap you in. This is coming from, of course, another waterfall that comes from deep into the deep slate. Just bone mealing around a little bit. I have some cherry saplings here and there that I'm going to start planting. These, I'm thinking, are going to create some mighty fine cherry trees. As we're going down the path towards this ancient portal, we are crossing paths with this new stable. We built this on a YouTube stream as well, and we actually do not have any horses in here yet, and that's kind of a problem because what's a horse stable without any horses? Thinking it's about time we go home and fill this space up. One more trip home never hurt anybody. Been a while since we stopped over at the stables. We have all these villagers here. All these guys are chilling. Which horse wants to come with us right here? You know what, Diamond Armor? Hector, what's going on? You're coming with me, sir. Let's open these up, close those, and let's be on our way. 
Hector can't swim, so we're pulling him on the lead. Hopefully, he's going to be okay going through this nether portal. We got Hector up. Let's get him through the portal. There he goes. All right, we are through. We have this Hector. What's good? Riding on a horse in the nether highway is a very strange feeling. One little push into the portal. There you go. Hector, welcome to the ancient... Ouch, that hurts. This sounds hilarious. Okay, let's head down here. Hopefully, there's no slimes, and we should be good. Hector, welcome to the ancient city village. I really hope you can make yourself at home here. Riding all the way through the campsite back here. This used to be all covered up in water. Oh my god, I still have to take out this wool. Almost there. Let's hop in through this way. We'll open this gate up, this gate up, and bam, we now have a horse in the horse stable. Hector, you are gonna love it here, and don't worry, we are gonna bring you some more horses. But first, before I forget, landing right up here, we're getting rid of all of the wool. Now that I'm up here getting kind of a better look at the lighting, I'm not really liking it as much. I'm thinking about replacing these with some strips of frog lights. Let's come back over for one more round of scaffolding. Come back up and take all of our original creation out. Kindly be gone, sir. We're gonna take out strips of the quartz and continue going down with these verdant frog lights. Actually, that right there is looking a lot better, a lot more sleek. So this is not bad, except right here I'm noticing these pillars. How did, I, how did I just leave these undone the whole time? Take this out, and okay, yep, there's water in there. Should have remembered that. Replace that with a frog light, though. Final quartz brick, and the final upside down stairs. This is looking not too bad, and we have the portal back here looking entirely revamped. The portal technically doesn't work, but we could do something to make it look like it works. You guys know me, I'm always carrying around a bunch of purple stained glass, and so I figured, you know what, why not just start using it on this portal right here, right now? It's kind of hard to see where I'm placing them, but uh, we'll get this done. And we are about to cross the finish line, that's perfect, let's hop down real quick, let's get all of this. Hop back over here on the barrier, and that is looking, that's so close to looking like a portal. When you zoom in, you can see the lines in between the panes, but from pretty far away, I, that, that looks really nice. One last detail for this build that's kind of calling my name, and that is the oak buttons. Walking around this top area, I noticed we are, we're lacking a little bit of uh, the button action right here, and I'm actually, did I just see a villager head? Guys, what are you doing back here? Alright, hold up, let's get you to fall right there. We're gonna get you to fall, and you can fall too. Rejoin society, guys. Rejoin society. We got the walkways updated, but there's one last thing. These outside barriers, they're kind of missing just a little bit of color, so I'm gonna fly down here real quick, and... Oh my god, is there another villager? He is right. What are you doing, dude? I'm gonna get you down. Don't worry. This is the end of the build, so this would be the cherry on top, but it is now the cherry on bottom. And with only two left over, that's going to complete the cycle. Okay, this is great. We have the train station over here now. This thing is always moving, and now we have this portal that's done. Dude, this guy, does this guy, is this the same one? We finally have the finished portal over here. We have a barn made for the animals, a terraced crop farm, all of these quartz pillars, and this quartz train station right here. You can fly through the portal to the other side. Actually, whoa, hold up, I forgot. It's a complete portal now that uh, we can't fly through there. We have the horse stables all the way over here. All of these complete tunnels as well. And if we fly back here behind the nightclub, we have a cozy hidden axolotl pond that if you go under the trees, jump right up here, you can hang out with the axolotls. You can jump out of here, and you have the back door to the nightclub that actually extends over here to the west just a little bit further, and we have the lush cave pond. Got chickens in every single corner of this world now. We have ponds and wildlife absolutely everywhere. This project turned out way better than I thought it could have. I've just fell absolutely in love with this. And I hope you guys did too. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. All of the live streams and all of the episodes that came out revolving this ancient city. It was super fun to transform this entire ancient city, and I'm calling it the entire ancient city for now, even though there is a small part that is beyond this skulk wall right here that is covered up by some water. Also, this huge lava lake up here, it's, it's going to take me about a year of real time to actually take all of that out, so we're going to put that on halt for a moment. But the thing that we need to focus on the most right now is this portal and how much it is done. We have villagers that are making their way up into the portal area. It's such a crazy feeling to finally have all of this constructed. Me, this fisherman, and this puppy here really hope you enjoyed your time watching the 8,000 day video. I'm going to hop down into the world. We got a lot more building to do. And guys, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Again, thank you for being a YouTube member, a Twitch subscriber, or a Patreon supporter. I really do appreciate all you guys. I'm going to hop down. I, we have so much to do in this world. Thanks again for stopping by. Really do appreciate y'all. Do something nice for somebody, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.